Hi everyone, this is Holly from Hot Humble Pie. Today I thought it would be fun to bring you a bunch of awesome craft ideas for home decor that are $3 or free to make. And as always, I hope you enjoy the show. Okay, let's jump on into it. Grab a Dollar Tree shadow box. I'm using some of their stick-on wallpaper and I'm finishing off the back of these, but you can leave them plain or put whatever you'd like inside the back. I'm using one of the Dollar Tree wooden bases here and I'm giving it a light dry brush with white paint, giving it a quick try. And I actually end up using the back of the shadow box for this craft and I'm painting that as well with dry brushing. It's not totally dry brushing, but it's just not perfect white paint. I'm using these seed starter pots from Dollar Tree. I love them because they're nice and light and they look heavy. They kind of look like concrete or cement because they have a rough texture. And I'm just dry brushing this with a bit of antique parchment from Apple Barrel. And I'm making a bow out of some twine and lace some ribbon from the Dollar Tree. This is all Dollar Tree ribbon. And the neat thing about those little seed pots is you can cut them. They are super easy and I'm just going to cut mine in half like this. I'm going to take some hot glue and glue it onto the back of the shadow box. Once I glued it, I just kind of pressed it into the shape that I wanted while the glue was drying. And then I filled it with some Spanish moss, lavender from Walmart, and I glued that bow on the front of it. And in person, I don't know if you can tell, but it was too white. So I decided to take some gray paint and just add a little bit of dimension and dry brushing in some areas here and there. And then I took a wet tissue and kind of smeared that around. It gave it a very beautiful effect. And this created a very versatile and beautiful decor piece that goes with many home styles and different looks. Again, it depends what color you paint this. It depends what season it is when you want to put it in your home shelf, entry table, but let me know what you guys think. For this project, I chose some pink fabric. You're, you can use any fabric you want and some cardboard. And you're just gonna take your cardboard and trace it out to make it into a big rectangle. You can make this however big you want it. I think mine was approximately like 12 inches by 15, something like that. And I'm just tracing it out now to look like a window. And you're going to cut out two of these. Next, you'll be gluing them together. The second one is a brace so that this stays and doesn't warp or bend. You could also use paint sticks or you could use several layers of thinner cardboard, however you want to brace it, but typically you don't wanna use just, the, you know, this cardboard I was using was really, really thick. So I only needed two. If you are working with thinner cardboard, please cut out three because you definitely wanna make sure that it looks thick that's what makes it look higher end and that it's nice and sturdy for you. Next, I'm gonna use some lightweight spackling. So I used the one from the Dollar Tree. I didn't realize how dry it was at the time. It's kind of like fluffy and dry. So what I did to remedy this is I just added some paint and a little bit of water to it, mixed it up, and it made it more like the consistency of a spackling that I am used to working with that is nice and creamy and easy to apply. If you're in other countries, you might refer to this as polyfilla or some kind of all-purpose filler. It's what you would use to fill in nail holes in a wall and then you're just going to take some kind of tool I chose a sponge you could use a spatula a paintbrush your fingers whatever you're comfortable with and you're just going to cover all of this cardboard front and back everywhere even inside you can see me doing it right here you want to make sure that nobody knows it's cardboard underneath and everything is covered so while my project is just a little bit damp, you can touch it. I'm pressing all the little peaks and ridges down to make them flatter. While that's drying, I went ahead and cut out three cardboard hearts. I'm gonna use this multi-purpose spray glue and just spray the cardboard and cover it with the fabric. Now this is where it can get really fun, you guys. You can use burlap, you can use neutral colors. I wanted to use pink at the time. You could use ticking stripe. You can make this however you want, but whatever you do, just have fun. 
Next, I chose gray to distress this. You can choose whatever color you want. And I just did a little bit of dry brushing. I decide to cut out one more heart in cardboard and then apply the lace doilies on top of that one. I'm gonna just cut around the edges here to make it easier to fold the fabric over the edge of the cardboard. So again, you can't see any cardboard. Then I'm gonna go ahead and glue one of the hearts on top of the bigger doily heart. I'm gonna add some lace ribbon and just do some garnishes, glue it on top of my window the way that I want it to look, and we're all done. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I'd love it if you click that button. This is some chicken wire that I found at the Dollar Tree. I don't know if it's supposed to be real chicken wire or like cheap chicken wire, but I'm using it today to make a super cute DIY. So I'm just going to kind of pick a size that I want and bend it in half and then use my wire cutters to cut it straight across. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take something big. So this is like a plastic vase that I found at the Dollar Tree, but you could use a box, you could use a big, huge like plastic container, anything that kind of helps you keep the chicken wire open because you're gonna need to kind of twirl it in like I am on either end. And I'm also gonna be taking the bottom corners and kind of rolling them so that they look round almost like in a purse shape. I'm actually using the wire that came with this chicken wire. It's what wrapped it up. It's a pretty generous piece and I just cut it in different sections and I put you know, I twisted one down at the bottom, in the middle, and at the top. You can also use the actual chicken wire, like the little ends to twist it around if you want to as well. I think that would hold it. I just did it to be extra careful so that it wouldn't fall apart. So once I had it in a pretty good shape, I took the plastic container out and started bending it in the opposite direction so that it wouldn't curl in on itself. And I just continually shape this move this, bend this. I did it without gloves. It's not too bad because it's not real chicken wire, but you might want to use gloves if you want to be a little bit rougher with it. And now I'm taking some of the Dollar Tree nautical rope and I just looped it through and then glued it together like this. And then I took some of the nautical, same nautical rope, but I took it apart because it comes apart in a whole bunch of different strands, but I just kind of right there, I just kind of took See how there's multiple strands? I just kind of took that thickness. It almost looks like there's three strands that you can pull apart, but actually there's tons of strands in there depending on how tiny you want to go. So I just kind of took the chunk that looked like one of the three and I spun it around the top of that nautical rope to cover it and then I'm gonna glue it. And I did that on both sides to make little handles. Now I'm gonna use some of the Spanish moss, like a huge amount of it. <laughs> and I'm gonna shove it in there. That absolutely helps hold it open at that point. And then any little rough edges like this at the top, right there, I'm gonna clip them down as far down as I can to make them nice and smooth. And I'll end up bending those little top pieces over as well, just so it's not so pokey, so you don't get poked. That's just to finish it off a little bit. And then you just tuck in your favorite florals. That's it. For this one, you're just gonna grab yourself a jar. I'm using a tiki masala jar and some fishnet nylons. I put my arm all the way down inside so I could get the bottom, and then I'm just gonna push the jar in, making sure the toe area is right in the center. And you can stop right here if you want, just tie the top in a knot and use it to hang that way, but I'm gonna finish mine off. This is some Walmart twine. I'm taking three strands and I'm gonna braid them together. And then I'm gonna use some of the Dollar Tree ribbon at the top. It's also made out of the same like twine material. And I'm gonna glue it underneath the fishnet, pull the fishnet up, and then tie the top with some tape just to hold it in place while we do the rest. 
Next, I'm gonna take the braided twine and make a handle out of it. That's why I put the ribbon underneath. It just gave it a little bit more to stick to. And then I'm just taking that same twine and I'm gonna wrap it all the way around the top again. This is just designed to make it stronger and give everything something to adhere to and to make sure those handles don't come off. I always like to clean up my twine, but hey, you don't have to. I just don't like all the little hair, but I made two of these. These came up so cute. I hung them on little hooks in my garden. They are perfect for summer, and they also move their way into the fall season and Halloween beautifully. For this next one, grab yourself a can. I'm using a coffee can and I'm using some white chalk paint that's meant for furniture. So it's got a little bit of better adhesion. You have a couple choices here. You could use a latex paint. You can use a paint mixed with primer. You could also use an acrylic paint if it says it's for an all surface kind of application. They all work. But I did the chalk paint first. And then after that, I went over with Apple Barrel acrylic paint in parchment. That's just a you know, an acrylic paint, so it would have chipped off. That's why I did the chalk paint first. But I wanted this to be kind of creamy beige. So now I'm adding some Mod Podge. That's a free printable down below. I will leave it in my description box. Just click where it says more or see more, depending on what device you're using, and a drop down menu will appear underneath my video. And this free printable will be in there. So I'm just applying the Mod Podge. I'm going to slap this image on, wet it down with a sponge. Now, with your sponge, you just have to make sure you don't get a lot of Mod Podge on it. Walk away and keep rinsing it if you have to, but you just keep pressing really, really hard, as hard as you can with the wet sponge until you see all the wrinkles are gone and the imagery has completely sunken into the grooves. Like, there's no other way to say that. I, that's what you have to kind of look for. So when it kind of becomes one with it. And then I took it outside, I sealed it up with this. While it was outside drying, I took this little wooden heart from the Dollar Tree, painted it white, distressed it with nutmeg color from the Apple Barrel line, and then some Spanish moss, put it inside the coffee can. You can also add trash bags in there so you don't use so much Spanish moss, but I had enough to spare. And then I'm just filling it with florals. These roses are from the Dollar Tree. The boxwood is from Amazon. It's down below in my description box. I decided I wanted to add a little bit of a bow. This was a great piece for Valentine's Day. It was a great piece for Easter. I brought it out again at Easter time. It came up so cute. Let me know what you think. next one was a lot of fun I have been seeing the wine glass little vinyl placemats it seems like forever since I've been shopping at the Dollar Tree and I thought you know what can I do with this these are kind of it's difficult to craft with those I had a couple ideas so I went ahead and did a pumpkin I, I freehanded it I had a really hard time getting the other side even so as you saw I cut out half the pumpkin then I took a piece of computer paper put it down traced it that half on the paper and then I got a nice even, you know, I just put it on the other side and traced the piece of paper and then I got a more symmetrical pumpkin. Look how cute that is though. I was so pleased with this one. So I'm using cardboard. I am using two of them because this cardboard, it was really clean and nice. It was on the inside of a package, but it was a little thinner. So I went ahead and used two of them. So we glue those two together and then we're gonna glue the vinyl placemat on top. When you work with cardboard, at least for me, it will just look cheap and nasty if you don't cover the sides. You have to cover the sides. It's mandatory, you guys. <laughs> and if you want the craft to look really nice in your home. If you don't care, it's okay too, but this is just my thing. I have to cover it. So this decorative twine that you can find at the Dollar Tree was perfect for this. I went ahead and I covered the entire pumpkin with this decorative twine ribbon. Here's some pretty fall ribbon that I found at the Dollar Tree. It's perfect for autumn. And 
all of that ribbon is from the Dollar Tree. Now, I'm making something called a messy bow here. If you want to see the full tutorial, I do have a bow video. It's linked down below in my description box. It's time stamped, so you don't have to watch the whole video if you don't want to. You can just look for the bow that you're looking for, click it, you know, it's in the top pinned comment there. You can just click the time and it will take you straight to that part of the video. And you can look for messy bow. So what is an autumn craft without raffia? Everyone knows I love my raffia at autumn. I always add it in there because for me that is just kind of the thing. It's, it's, I love raffia and it's especially appropriate during fall and autumn crafts. So I'm just taking a little bit of the raffia. I got this raffia on Amazon, it's really nice. If you can find them, you can also use the hula skirts from the Dollar Tree, but I'm just making a little raffia bow there. I'm gonna trim it up kind of haphazardly there so it looks nice and rustic, which I love, especially during fall. And that's it. We are going to put a hanger on the back of this. I kind of regretted that I did that because I think I am going to want to put it in one of those plate holders instead and put it on my kitchen counter. So I might take the hanger off. But if you want to hang it up, what I did is I took some of the Dollar Tree nautical rope. I went ahead and hot glued it on the back. And then I used some duct tape to cover that while the glue was still hot so it would all kind of meld together. I usually use masking tape for this, but they don't have the wide masking tape right now at Dollar Tree. And I do like the tape to be wide. So duct tape works just fine too. It's just to reinforce it so it's not just relying on the hot glue. And I've never had trouble with this falling off. You could even put it outside. It works really, really well. And I'm just trimming the edges there to round it out so that the tape you know you don't see it on the edge and we're all done one I started off with some packing foam that I got in some thing I ordered from Amazon I keep everything so it is that foam that has a lot of little white balls but if you go really slow and cut it wasn't that bad so I went ahead and cut out a huge heart shape it's pretty big I think it's like 18 inches high at the highest point here and then I cut out some foam board from the Dollar Tree to put on the top so that my surface was nice and smooth now because we are dealing with foam I chose to use cold glue and just let it set up because I didn't want, you know, the if you've worked with foam before, you know if you use hot glue, you'll burn a hole down in there so it doesn't really adhere really well. So most of this project was done with cold glue or Mod Podge and that worked perfect, it was fine. Next, we're gonna be using this garden fence from the Dollar Tree. And we're gonna be cutting it with the tin snippers. This was the best method I found to cut these. So you're gonna cut out that shape right there to start with. And then I just took little bits of pieces here and there and decided to add to it. So you, you can do whatever you want to fill in the little blank spaces. I just didn't want quite as many blank spaces. I mean, this would even be pretty just with a simple, you know, less is more approach where you just put one of these in the middle, that's it, and then do some kind of pretty border, maybe with beads or something like half beads. That would also look really pretty. But I wanted the whole thing to have a 3D look. And this is what I came up with right here when we were all done. So to hold those on, again, because we're working with foam, I went with Mod Podge, because Mod Podge is a little stronger than regular school glue. It has more of a plastic type chemical. There's, they actually add plastic into it, and I've shown on my previous videos how you can just peel that off and it's like a sheet, a really thin sandwich bag, basically. But it is a much more durable hold. At least that was what I had available. You can always use a stronger glue, but that's what I had available. So I went ahead and stayed with the Mod Podge, and that also allowed me to adjust the pieces where I wanted them at the perfect angle. And then I just put a heavy box on top of it and let it dry. Once it was dry, I went ahead and gave it a coat of the chalk paint in the color plaster, it's Waverly. And I did a lot of debating whether or not I wanted to dry brush this because you know when we work with the Dollar Tree tiles, at least with me, I often dry brush over because the designs that are kind of puffed up are subtle. So to bring them out some more, I dry brush, but these are so chunky <laughs> that you don't really need to dry brush them because there's already so many natural shadows happening. So after sitting and staring at it for about an hour, yes, about an hour, I decided I'm just gonna leave it all creamy one color. I think that looks best. This is, this is actually gonna hang in my hallway. And to solve the side problem where we don't want people knowing it's made out of foam, I just took my old trick 
and I put some of the joint compound on the side. Once it dries, I will sand that down. And then to hang it, again, wet glue. I used wood glue this time and put some duct tape over it and then put a heavy, just, I have a heavy Waverly container on there to keep the string really tight because you don't want to see it come up from behind when you hang it. Although this isn't heavy, so it shouldn't stretch too much. And there's two um, staples in there that I did with a staple gun just for extra strength. Now you see those sides right there. See on the side of the, where you cut the garden fence, there's always like little open areas when you slit them in the areas where they're connected. That's unavoidable. I don't like that. You can leave it if you want to, but this is gonna hang in my hallway, like I said, and you know you are gonna see that. So what I'm going to do is go to the Dollar Tree and get some of the caulking that they sell in the red tube and just squirt it in there and fill it in so it's all cohesive. But this came up so beautiful. It's hanging in my hallway right now, and I absolutely love this. Let me know what you think. What you're looking at here are three tiki masala jars from Aldi's and those are great. You put them in the dishwasher and the label comes right off in one complete piece so it doesn't break up in pieces and there's no goo left behind at all on the jar. Super easy to do. So that's what I did. And these tiles, as you saw, they have four quadrants with this little design in it. And I had an idea that I would like to put this design on the jar. So that was going to be a bit challenging since these are plastic tiles and they, you know, they're not bendy. They're, they bend, but they're kind of resistant. So I'm going to go ahead and cut them down. I'm going really slow here so you can see exactly what line I chose to cut at. And for those of you that love to blend crosses in with your Easter decor, these definitely could pass for a very pretty cross. They kind of have a medieval look or an Italian look maybe even French country, they're very pretty. Now I'm using tape to glue them down because these definitely will not stick to any kind of shiny surface, even with the strongest hot glue. I think even with a regular glue, they might be resistant. So you definitely need something down on the jar. Now I didn't have any duct tape, but if I did it again, I probably would use duct tape. They did hold and they're holding just fine, but I'm just giving you guys you know, a better tip, I guess, if you don't want to deal with them coming off, a stickier tape with a nice sticky surface would work really, really good. If you only have masking tape, you can use masking tape. It does work. And I'm just covering all of the masking tape. So I put it in a cross shape and then I go crisscross as well to make sure that there's plenty of surface for these tiles to stick down on. They do get hot. They conduct heat, so be careful when you're pressing them. I did burn myself when I was doing these. So all of them are done right there. That's what they look like. And I'm just going to put some white acrylic paint on. Again, this isn't chalk paint. It's nothing fancy. It's just acrylic paint. I don't mind if they look a little streaky because I like that distressed look. If you want a real solid white color, you could you know, turn to chalk paint or even milk paint or a latex paint would give you a more solid look. Or you could do two coats of the acrylic paint. Now I'm using the color Nutmeg Brown to bring out this design. I just thought that looked really kind of just earthy and just perfect for what I was trying. This is the look I was trying. I had a vision and it definitely came out the way I was envisioning. I'm also taking my brush and making sure I'm doing the edges of that tile as well to make sure they pop. See that and you can see it. I thought that looked really nice. Now to make sure that these stayed on my jar, I go ahead and take some of the Dollar Tree twine, I put a dot of hot glue in the front and I wrap it around just twice and then I glue it back in the front again because we're gonna go ahead and put some front embellishment so you won't see this. I actually loved the way that looked, but if you use duct tape and a stronger industrial glue to hold the tiles down, you probably wouldn't have to do this step. I like it, I may have done it anyway, even if I had used a stronger glue, it looks really pretty, but I'm just letting you know you don't have to do that step if you don't want to. And now I'm taking some of the Dollar Tree twine that is decorative, I'm using the top one for the lid, 
here and then I'm going to use the bottom one for the bows in a minute here and we're just doing the hot glue in the back everything's going in the back of these jars because you're not going to see the back when they're up in my home so now you can see what I was talking about see how there's three different designs the top one is on the top of the jar and the bottom one is going to be the loops for the bow and I made two for each jar So for this part here, I'm just going to take each loop and glue them at a crisscross, so kind of like an X, I guess, to make my bow on the front. So I'm using the little Dollar Tree bunnies again. They come in a package. I held them up to these jars, and the front of them with the tail is too dark. It just kind of got lost, I thought, in the craft. I wanted them to pop a little bit more, so I took the tails off of them and I turned them upside down. And now we have the light cut. See how much you can, how much more you can see them? So they would be visible, I guess, from far away to be able to tell they're bunnies. So I'm just using the Walmart lavender now. All I do with the lavender is I just bend that stem at the bottom and then it springs you know it wants to come straight again so it springs out and it holds flowers nice and tight in jars without having to use any foam and we're all done This next one is super fun. I've been waiting two years to make this and I finally got around to doing it. So you're going to need one of those little dove containers from the Dollar Tree, one of the little mini planters that you find the succulents in from the Dollar Tree, and this nail polish holder from the Dollar Tree, and a black lid off of a drink. I got this off of a Halloween plastic cup from the Dollar Tree, and you just use the black lid part of it. If you have something similar and you can substitute it, go ahead. And we're gonna need some towering blocks. So I glue five of the towering blocks together in rows and once I had those two rows I glue them together to form this square here it's not a perfect square but close to and I'm using some hot glue to glue the little plant pot upside down I did remove the foam on the inside I do end up having to secure that with some gorilla super glue I'm just letting you know uh, you know it, it once I started painting it it kind of got wet and wanted to come apart there so all of these pieces including this one that I'm gluing right now I do end up having to secure with the Gorilla super glue so it needs a stronger hold than just hot glue even though I'm using a good hot glue it just these just aren't great surfaces for hot glue so there I go <laughs> there's the Gorilla super glue I'm securing everything down So if you've guessed already, we're making one of those little antique scales. And I saw that piece, that nail polish thing, and it was just the perfect shape. Everything was perfect. That's why it took me so long to make this, you guys, is I couldn't find anything that quite hit the mark for that. And I wanted to make one for my tiered tray. So this is small enough to put on a tiered tray. And that's what it looks like when we're all done. And that thing, on, you know, that little nail polish thing, it's actually rubber. So it bounces around like a scale too. It's really cool. It came out really, really, really nice. So I painted the whole thing with black acrylic paint. I I believe this is a multi-purpose paint actually even though it's acrylic it does say multi-purpose so there's it covers and sticks to different surfaces I gave it a quick blow dry and now I'm using some of the Dollar Tree lightweight spackling which I mixed with some paint you can use chalk paint or acrylic paint but it makes it creamier the lightweight's a little bit too crumbly for me and it makes it act more like what I'm used to as I call it the normal spackling it's just creamier and I filled it in and then painted over the hole now I'm using some of their spray on adhesive it was plugged so I poured it in and used a sponge and I'm just gluing the face of this little scale down I think I googled antique scale face and this came up it's a free printable and I'm gonna go about aging and distressing this I give it a dry brush of white paint all over I do decide to do the base solid white and the very bottom of it more of a solid black so I changed my mind a little bit but the metal part the top that's supposed to be you know balancing the scale I choose a copper 
from Folk Art. It's one of the metallic paints there and I make that look like a faux aged copper. And now I'm gonna go back and paint the base a little bit more solid white. It's okay for me if some of the black shows through because that's how an enamel would look if it was naturally wearing from age and this is supposed to be an old scale. It's supposed to be an antique, but I decide that I want it a little less distressed so I go back and put a little bit more black paint on the base. And then you'll see me in the front here around the clock I'm going to be adding little marks to make it look like chipped enamel as well. I'm just touching up where I want the white paint not to show, but I absolutely love the way that this came out. It came out exactly the way I was envisioning it, and it's going on my tiered tray. For this project, I glued my towering blocks in these formations. So first I made the square and I kind of just went around and made an L. I don't know if you can tell. Again, this is hard to describe, so I'm just going to leave this picture here for a while so that you can see what I did. You put the towering block in the corner, then you put one down at the bottom like a, a weird like a weird shaped L. And you do this exact same thing on the opposite side until you just make little squares. And then I glued all those squares on top of each other. So there's four of them all together. I'm going to make six of them all together. So once I made this row of four, I'm going to glue two of them together and then I'm going to leave two of them single. And I'm really using those cuticle clippers, I don't know if you noticed that, because with the wood glue, when it's wood hot glue, you have to move really fast before it dries and rip it off or you cannot get it off and it will make it all lumpy and then your little blocks won't go together very well. So now I'm going to glue the sides on and I am not making a lantern for those of you that thought I was. I'm not going to do the even sides. I actually decided to do pillars. I actually am going to make another one of these. Well, by the time this video comes out, I would have made another one and I'm going to give it to my neighbor because she has her home like an island decor. She uses a lot of gourds. There's like I don't know what they, they call it. I think it's the Day of the Dead or whatever. She has like those little skeleton people that, are, that they look really cute. They're all dressed in these cute little costumes, a lot of bamboo in her home. And I just thought it fit perfect in her decor theme. She will probably put it, I'm guessing, at the bottom of her, well, I'm envisioning it at the bottom of her fireplace on either side. And she can put a plant on top of it, a candle, some beads, whatever you know she wants this is kind of like a riser I guess in a way because it's like a mini pillar but I think it's perfect for that kind of decor in particular if you do coastal decor anything well, I think these look a little bit like bamboo so anything that you know coastal decor themes any kind of island theme um, and I think modern decor definitely too this is perfect for that you can make some really fancy smancy stuff with these little towering blocks but I end up doing a row of eight of the towering blocks, right? And then I glue three of those together. You can see it right there to create the top and the bottom of this pillar. For 
For this project, I asked my daughter to send me some of her baby formula cans because I knew it would be much easier to work with since they're made out of cardboard for the look that we're going to go for today. So the first thing I did was remove the bottom with a can opener and then you can see that I'm starting to use my hands just to press it down. And I did take some needle nose pliers and some regular pliers too just to squeeze the end down. It doesn't have to be perfect just as long as it looks closed. And see that little piece of paper sticking up? If that happens to you, no big deal. Just wait for the paint to dry and you can shave it off with a utility knife or a craft knife. Here's a free printable. I went ahead and printed it up on tissue paper. The printable will be down below in my description box. I love using the tissue paper method for transfers because it allows you to use really beautiful imagery that's detailed and it looks almost like it's painted on because the tissue paper is transparent. So. I am leaving it on the cardstock. So you can see what I did here. I just used masking tape. I taped the tissue paper down on the cardstock, put it through my printer, the right side facing up so that it will print down on the tissue paper. And that's it, it's that easy. I cut it out and now I'm using a glue stick from the Dollar Tree to apply it to the front of my craft. I am taking the Dollar Tree cuticle clippers and just twisting them back and forth to put some holes on the side. Super easy to do, easier than a can. And and the other thing I really like about the cardboard is that you can get it into a nice graduated pocket so it looks more like a pocket. The can pockets that I've been seeing on Pinterest, some of them, not all of them, but when they pound the bottom, the top is too round and bulky and it looks a little bit distorted. So you don't get that so much with these because obviously they're easier to smash down. So I'm just taking a little bit of the antique wax and I'm dry brushing the front and the back. Now comes time to decorate these. These are so much fun to decorate. I have to be honest, I actually felt like making 50 of these and I couldn't because I didn't have time, but I think these are so cool. So I'm taking some Hobby Lobby ribbon that I got 50% off and I'm just going to trim the edge of this with the little lace ribbon. It's not really lace, I don't know what you call that. It was in the lace section, but it's almost like a crochet cord with designs or I'm not sure. It's more like a somewhere between like a crochet and lace, but the Dollar Tree lace ribbon would have worked beautifully too. I just didn't have any. And now I'm using some of this green raffia. I got a great deal on Amazon. Again, the link is down below in my description box. If you're interested, it comes in green, red, and then that nice neutral kind of brownish color, tan color. So I take and cut nine strands in the same length and then I grouped three of them together so they're a little thicker and I went ahead and taped it onto my table and then I braided it all the way down to make a cord and we're going to use this to hang this little pocket here. I'm just pushing it through the holes from the inside and I decided to leave the green like little tassel out on the edge to add to the look. It, I just thought it looked so cute when I was done and I just tie a knot on the outside of those tassels so that they don't come out and I am going to use a little hot glue to secure the them down because I don't want them sticking straight out to the side. I want them hanging down like kind of like naturally like a tassel would if it was made out of yarn or twine. So I glued them down and then I put a little paper towel in there to fill it up just a little bit and now I added some Spanish moss on top. And then I'm just going to start adding florals, you guys. It's that simple. These are Dollar Tree roses. They're so beautiful. But I'm just going to go ahead and fill this up with different florals. The neat thing about these, too, is you can make them seasonal. You can change the print. You can use seasonal florals. Really, really fun. Again, this is some ribbon from Hobby Lobby 50% off. I made a cute little bow with two of them. So this is just your classic bow if you want to go check it out. But we're all done, and I absolutely love this. project you're going to need some small craft sticks some towering blocks and one little wooden bead or something else that's round like that so you're starting off with three of the towering blocks you can see I've laid them out there that's how you're going to glue them together and what I'm doing here is I'm just measuring the small craft sticks to the height that I want you can choose any height you want I think I picked 
approximately four and a half inches here and I'm just cutting them straight on both ends. Next, I gave it a light sanding on each end just to smooth out the rough edges. I'm gluing these together with hot wood glue. You can use cold wood glue. I think for this particular craft, you could probably just use any glue hot any hot glue at all because it's not you know it's tiny there's not that much weight or counter pressure and it should hold together just fine but here I'm taking two of the smaller craft sticks and I'm gluing them together at an angle just like that and I'm going to do that with all four of them so there's four sets of two so I had to cut eight small craft sticks all together Once you glued all of the eight craft sticks together in these sets of two, you'll have four little pillars and I'm just gluing them on the corner of the little towering blocks that I glued together like this. I decided to go ahead and add some of the Dollar Tree cubes. I found four that I thought were even enough in the same size and height. Same thing with the towering blocks. These unfortunately are not all created equal, so you kind of have to hunt through and get ones that are as equal as possible in size. And then I glued four of them together like this. And now I'm using a wooden bead and gluing it on the very top. And I'm gonna take some of the Dollar Tree lightweight spackling and just kind of fill in the little grooves as much as I can. But I do add paint to my lightweight spackling. I think I've used at least half of that jar and I just keep adding paint. And it's weird, the lightweight spackling kind of soaks up the paint and the paint disappears, but it just makes it smoother and easier to work with and also increases its volume. So you end up with a lot more spackling. It's like, it's a spackling that just keeps giving. It never goes away no matter how much I use it. So that's a nice little trick there and you can save a little bit of money doing that. I would say all together in there, Geez, I think I just squirt like, I think I squirt about two to three tablespoons in that jar and stir it up. And then as it thickens up again, I'll put more in and more in. So I actually don't know how much I have at this point, but that is something you can do and it won't affect the spackling. Well, the, the lightweight spackling that's really dry and crumbly, it won't affect its ability to fill in cracks. So now I'm just using some of my homemade chalk paint. If you're interested in the recipe, the video link will be down below in my description box. There's a couple recipes you can choose from and they save you money if you craft a lot and you like chalk paint. I chose to use a gray paint. It's the elephant gray and apple barrel paint to distress this. You can also use, you know, a brown if you want, whatever you like. I just have a little lantern upstairs that already has this. And I thought it'd be cute to match it up. And of course, this is absolutely adorable. You could add a little tea light in it if you want. Definitely electrical for this one. Or you can add plants in it. I put a little tiny mini succulent in mine, but I think it makes such cute tiered tray decor. and a tray from the Dollar Tree or anywhere you'd like to get it and some cardboard hearts or a pattern for a cardboard heart. 
I start off by giving this one coat of my homemade chalk paint. You can find that video down below in my description box if you'd like to check it out. I have part one and part two, so lots of choices on how to make your chalk paint, and I think it works as good or better than the one you buy. It's a lot of fun to make, and you save a lot of money. So now I cut out three hearts, and I purposely have been saving this cardboard, I kid you not, since my Christmas deliveries, because this cardboard had that like serrated look, kind of like galvanized metal, that, that bumpy look. For my crafts for this video, I did want that look because when I was in Hobby Lobby the other day checking out some of the Valentine Day decor, I noticed that the metal ones had that same look just like cardboard. And I thought, oh, I could get that look with cardboard. I just have to make sure I pay attention when I get those pieces that have the little lines and bumps on. So I start off painting those hearts with the white chalk paint and then I use a Dollar Tree doily but I'm only using parts of it just to add some texture and design to the front of the hearts. Now I'm measuring out some craft sticks and we're going to go ahead and fill in the center of that tray with the craft sticks. If you use medium sized craft sticks, you will have to cut a little tiny piece to fit in at the bottom. If you're using a Dollar Tree tray, one of these trays, we don't get quite a perfect fit with them side by side, but it comes out really nice anyway. And now I'm using a baby wipe and some of the Burnt Umber Paint by Apple Barrel and just using it as a stain to stain that wood and also to antique these hearts. Now, my goal here is to bring out the designs of the lace so you can kind of see it so i put a little bit of paint on top and then use the wet baby wipe to rub it off and then i'm going to lightly use the baby wipe also to brush over those lines to make sure we bring out those serrated lines and of course now i'm taking the same burnt umber and just going around the edges of the tray Next, I use this Dollar Tree ribbon and I carefully cut it down the center to make it a lot thinner because I'm going to be using it to cover the edges of these hearts. I made a bow out of this soft velvet pink ribbon that I found on clearance at Walmart. It was 75% off. It was a Christmas ribbon. I got it for about 78 cents. And I'm gonna glue the Dollar Tree lace bow on top of it. Lastly, I glue all three of these hearts on top of the tray. And I think this piece would be really pretty as an end piece on a mantle or even a centerpiece or on a shelf in a corner. Or you could put a hanger on the back of it and use it on the wall, but I think it came up so pretty. We don't often get a lot of these rounds at my Dollar Tree, so when I found them during Valentine's, I grabbed a bunch of these for DIYs. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the sticker off the back and give it two coats of my white chalk paint. This is a free printable that I made myself and I will provide it down below in my description box. All of the printables will be in my description box today. And I went ahead and printed it again on the tissue paper. It's my favorite way, like I said. And this time I'm gonna take a little bit of water and a brush and I'm just gonna go around the edges and tear this really gently because I want the edges to be a little shredded so that it blends more into my surface and you don't notice the edges as much. So the way you find a description box as well 
Bible. I get a lot of questions about this. If you're on a PC, click the See More and a drop down menu will appear. If you're on a cell phone or a tablet, click the little gray arrow in the upper right hand corner and a drop down menu will appear and you'll see all the links down in there. So I'm using a Dollar Tree glue stick to glue this down. Again, super, super cheap. You get four of them for $1.25. Sometimes you'll see a package of eight and you'll get that for $1.25. Grab those up, but it works wonderful for a permanent hold with minimal, if any, wrinkling at all. So I'm taking some more of the raffia from Amazon, twisting it so I can thread some wooden beads on. The wooden beads were like $4.50 for 100 from Amazon. Great deal glued it on the back with hot glue, added some duct tape for extra strength, and now I'm filling in the top hole with some of the Dollar Tree spackling, and I'm gonna add a little bit more white paint over it. And that's it, we're all done. I think this is such a cute wall decor piece. Let me know what you think. For this project, I'm making a uh, window and to start with, so you're just making little rows of three that go on the top and the sides and the bottom. And then you're gonna put the little one towering block in the, I don't know, I don't know how to say that. I guess it's just inside the middle to make the window little panes. Is that right? I'm not sure. but. I don't like the seams to be really, really pronounced. That's the one reason I usually don't make a lot of things out of the Jenga blocks. This is the challenging part of Jenga blocks. So I'm gonna take some of the Dollar Tree lightweight spackling. I like to mix the lightweight one up with a little bit of paint and it can be any kind of paint. And then I stir it up and it kind of makes it feel and perform more like a regular spackling, at least the kind of spackling I'm thinking of where it's a little heavier and creamier. That works really well. Now I didn't get rid of every single last seam but I definitely made it look less noticeable. So now I'm making the bottom part of this window and I just did two blocks at the bottom in little sections of three and then I did three of the blocks glued together three in the front and one on each side and if you get some glue on the bottom there I am using hot wood glue now if you do not have hot wood glue I do recommend you do this with a cold wood glue because I think it's gonna fall apart otherwise it might not but I've had bad luck in the past but those little clippers on the side those cuticle clippers are from the Dollar Tree they're not really sharp but they're perfect for a crafting tool and they're perfect to pull like the little globs of hot glue once they're dry that you don't want showing on your Jenga blocks or I'm sorry these are towering blocks <laughs> and they are also not perfect that's one thing that I learned when I was working with these they are in different sizes shapes even heights so they're difficult to kind of make things with I think or not difficult but challenging because you do have to kind of match your pieces together so I tried to section them all off like the small ones here the thicker ones here and then use them in groupings so that it came together hopefully better now I'm using the apple barrel paint in the elephant gray just doing a little bit of dry brushing to kind of distress this little window box this is a great tiered tray decor piece and now I'm using the Again, it's a floral moss from the Dollar Tree, and I'm using some boxwood that I got on Amazon. You can get this at Walmart. I think I got a great deal on Amazon. I can't remember. When I bought it, I think it was on sale, so it was a great deal. I got a big bundle, and I'm using a mix of the lavender from the Dollar Tree and other florals that were out during the springtime. I think they're still there during summer as well, but I'm just mixing it up to kind of make this look like a little flower window box, and this came out absolutely so adorable, you guys. Let me know what you think. I thought it would be fun to make a rustic pine tree, but then I had a better idea. And so I just took a craft stick, I laid it horizontally, and I'm gluing two or one on either side, a total of two 
and I'm gonna go as far up as I can, it kind of naturally starts to gravitate inwards, so you can only go so high before you have to stop. Well, with this project anyway, I have to leave a certain amount of room at the top, and I'm just layering them on top of each other on purpose to kind of create like little layers or folds there, or feathers, or however you wanna think of that, but you can see what I'm doing right there, and I'm just gonna go as far as I can. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and measure a craft stick across the top, but see how I'm drawing it at an angle a little bit? I didn't wanna cut this totally square. I'm kind of rounding out the edges the best I can. There's just a little subtle curve there, see? And I'm just gonna glue that on the top. And I also put a stick at the bottom there to create like a little square opening. You can see it right there. So you just measure and glue a stick behind that as well. And now I'm gonna go ahead and take more craft sticks and glue them all the way across and then go up on each one of those just like I did with the side ones and create those little faux ruffles. For those of you that need to see this a little slower, there is an option on YouTube to change the playback speed on any video. It's like a little flower looking white icon on the bottom right hand corner of your video and you just click on it and that option will come up playback speed and you can adjust it however you need it to be. So next I'm taking the Dollar Tree mop and I showed you how easy those are just to pull out. Thank you to the subscriber who gave me that tip. I don't remember your name, but someone said, oh, you can just pull those out now. You don't need to crack off the black thing. And boy, is that a great tip. So you just gently pull them out and then they come apart in individual little strands. And I'm just going about gluing them on now in different sections because we're creating faux hair here. For those of you that haven't guessed, I am making an angel. So I'm going to go ahead and work with that arch that I created on the craft sticks and kind of glue the hair upwards. You can see it right there how I kind of made it go up softly in more of a U shape at the top of her head. See, I'm patting it down. So I put a little bit of glue on top there just to, so just so it's all those little strands stay in that shape of more like a head because I didn't want her to have like a square top head. And that's it. That's what we have so far for hair. I think that's so, so cute. So now we're going to go about making some arms and some wings for her and a halo. So for the halo, I just use some of the nautical rope from the Dollar Tree and I take my little flame, float it over there to get rid of all the stray little strands and make it nice and clean. And I just glue that on the back. It doesn't go all the way around. It just goes halfway around, but I glue that on the back like this. And then using a little bit more hot glue and a cut craft stick, you can see it right there. I'm just securing the back of the halo like that. And then comes her sleeves, and I decide to glue that little craft stick behind her like that, and then put two craft sticks at the top at an angle, which I go about hiding with her hair. You can see I'm gluing over it right there. I'm gonna glue it on both sides so that you can't see that and secure her hair down that way. I'm also going to give her a little haircut so it's a bit more even, and then come her wings. I was also thinking you could fill in her sleeves if you wanted, that might look kind of cute. I just left it to kind of match the face, but you could do it either way, either way would be cute. And then I'm taking some more craft sticks here and I'm just gonna fan them out. So this is pretty straightforward. I think it's easy to follow. I'm just gluing a bunch of craft sticks together in a fan shape and I'm gluing two sets of them because those are going to be her wings. Lastly, you're just gonna take a whole bunch of hot glue. Now I am using a wood glue by Surebonder. This is a Surebonder glue gun. It's a really small glue gun with small glue sticks. I have an excellent wood glue, hot wood glue, also for large glue guns in my description. I'll leave both of them in my description box. But you do need a really strong glue, at least a Gorilla Glue for these crafts. And that's it, she's all done. She's a beautiful, primitive, rustic angel. I cut all of these hearts out. I'm using some Dollar Tree wrapping paper, some Dollar Tree doilies, some of the fabric, and some of these printables I found online. Again, everything will be down below in my description box. They are free printables. 
So for this, I am using the glue stick from the Dollar Tree. You can use any glue stick you want, but I am working with wrapping paper and wrapping paper does have a tendency to crinkle a lot. So you really wanna go with your driest choice of glue to avoid any kind of buckling or wrinkling in your final results. So I'm just pressing it down now and I'm also going to press sideways to make sure those little serrated lines show because this is actually kind of a dupe that I saw in Hobby Lobby that was metal but it was flowered. It was like printed metal that had prints on it and I thought it was so so pretty and they had it out for Valentine's Day and I thought you know I could make something similar and I could do it with this cardboard. So now we're just cutting around the edges here. We're going to do those little slits and we're going to cover the edges of the cardboard. And this is what it looks like when you're all done. You should see those lines nicely. Now I found this wrapping paper, both rolls, in the wedding section of the Dollar Tree. And they're just, I thought, perfect for love and romance and a soft Valentine's Day decor. And the other prints I just printed up on my printer using regular old printer paper. And of course, here comes the doily. Now for this one, you don't need to cover the cardboard at all. It looks like wood underneath and it provides perfect dimension so that you can actually see the lace design really pretty. And I'm going to cover all of the hearts and then I'm gonna go ahead and situate them and hot glue them down in the position that I want. I'm kind of making like a heart collage, I guess. And now I'm adding some ribbon and, you know, it's lace ribbon and then a nice bow that I saved for this craft. I actually made that bow in my bow video, my bow hack video, and I wanted to save it for the Valentine's Day craft. And I'm adding some nice little Dollar Tree flowers. And then lastly, I decide that my lace doily heart is a little bit too plain in the center. I mean, you can leave it if you want to, but I just felt like, why not? Just add a little bit more texture, a little bit more design. So we're doing the trick again with the felt heart and we're doing it with fabric this time. And we're gonna cut it out and put it on the middle of the lace doily. Ross is a great place to find stuff on clearance when you go there. This was the same price as the Dollar Tree, but twice as long as the pieces that they sell. So I just broke off the words, cut it in half, and it made a perfect stand for this craft. And I'm just using a little bit of hot glue to hold the front in place. Now, I don't have any towering blocks at any of my Dollar Trees. They are sold out and I can't find them, so I might end up ordering those online. But in the meantime, I cut a bunch of craft sticks and glued them together so that they would work the same way for the same purpose. I just wanna give a little bit of a brace in the back of this project so it holds it up. Added some of those velvet bows and we're all done. For this next project, you're going to be gluing the craft sticks together to make a hexagon shape. And you're going to do it in a way where you can see how the craft sticks overlap each other, but at some point, two ends are on top of another craft stick. So you want the two ends to be on top because you're gonna be gluing the other craft stick down on top of two even ends. If you don't have that even, they'll be lopsided. And obviously you have to keep all these really level and flush again, um, or it will be all wonky and crooked. <laughs> so I ended up doing 14 rows of craft sticks, which is approximately two and a half inches in depth. That's where we end up right here. And I'm showing you in slow motion now what I meant. See how I'm putting the dots on the two ends there that are above the craft stick? You have to look for those sections to put your craft sticks on so that they're nice and even. And this is what it looks like when we're all done. Next, I'm using one of those pans that you can find from the Dollar Tree. I think it's meant for like drippings. I don't know what this is called. Maybe it's called a dripping pan. 
but you need one of these or you could use a different one if you find another design that you would like but I just thought this would be fun to work with for the look that I'm going for and I'm using my scissors to cut but I usually wear gloves I didn't do it today but I want to show you how I'm really careful each time I cut upwards to bend that you know it's like a heavy foil away from your hand so that you don't get cut because that did happen to me once and it's unpleasant but you're perfectly fine as long as you cut bend away cut bend away and I did use my wire cutters on the ends because you know the little ridge around the edge of it because that is a little thicker and more difficult to cut with regular scissors of course I'm going to remove the sticker on the back of this and now I'm going to take a permanent marker you can use any marker and just trace it out because we're going to be cutting it in the shape of our hexagon Once that's done, you're just going to need to check it for sizing. The goal here is not to have any edges that might cut you sticking out over the wood. You want it to be on the wood, but just cut back enough where you don't ever come into contact with the edge. And you can also cover the edges with some masking tape if you want or some other kind of tape just to protect yourself a little bit further. But that's what it looks like when we're all done. So. I'm going to take these craft sticks, you can see what I'm doing here, and just put them all together. And I'm using more than enough because it has to be the width of the hexagon. And then I secured it with craft sticks at the top on purpose so that it wouldn't splinter at the end there and it holds them all together but also obviously if you put it up at the edge where you're going to cut it will prevent it it's better than masking tape right it's going to prevent it from fraying so that's a great little trick that you can do if you can do it you can't always do that sometimes you just like that one time I cut the small triangle for my first DIY I had to cover it with tape because I couldn't put a stick on it and of course I glued down the back of the metal onto the hexagon and I'm just further reinforcing this because it's going to be the front. So I'm using plenty of hot glue here and in case you haven't guessed, we are making a wall sconce where we're going to be able to put little plants in, succulents, whatever you want, a hanging vine, hanging succulents would be cute in this. And then we're going to trim off at the edge there using scissors. It was super easy to do. I chose to use a nail file to round the corners and then smooth and level out all the rest of it so that it looked nice and neat. And now I'm just using the watered down antique wax for stain. You can use whatever stain you want. And you'll also see me put some stain on the metal because that's my look. I don't like everything to look squeaky clean. This is a great look for industrial farmhouse or nautical, like a nautical bathroom. It looks so cute with some like long succulents hanging out of it. It would also work out really nice for boho or any kind of island look. This is actually very heavy when you hold it. It's nice and thick. It comes across very high end because it's wood, but considering what it's made out of, of, I think this came up so nice. This is another burlap kitchen inspired craft, only I'm making, uh, you know, it different. I'm obviously making it for like a smaller version here, a tiered tray, but you can make this DIY in any size. You can do it with a piece of two by four all the way up to a huge piece of wood. I just wanted my dinky for my tiered tray. So I'm taking the towering blocks. I'm going to glue three of them together. I hope you could see, you can see what I did there. Working with towering blocks is difficult because you actually have to see a visual, but I took threes like that piled them on top of each other and I just did two rows of those and then glued that together so it makes it a lot thicker and that's how we made that and then I'm going to use this star uh, print up again because it's perfect for the primitive look I'm going for and I'm going to cover the half bottom part of this little towering block formation thing here. I'm just using a glue stick. I like the glue stick because it doesn't leave wrinkles and it just works really well for me. I haven't had any bad luck with it so far. I mean, if you're gonna glue fabric down or something like that, you probably definitely have to use, you have to go for your bigger guns, the Mod Podge, but if you're just using paper or tissue paper, glue stick 
nine out of 10 times works brilliantly. And so you can see here, I'm just folding it over the edge. And at the top, I used again, the apple barrel paint in the candy apple red, and I did little stripes on the top. And then I'm just taking some white paint and that one is also just apple barrel brand. And I'm filling in in between the little white stripes. Now I'm painting the little middle part there white, but I do end up going over it with a second coat in the antique parchment just to tone it down a little bit and make it a little bit more warm. And that's what we have so far. And then I take a craft stick, I cut it a little bit, you know, at the edge there. Well, we're making a little Uncle Sam here. That's what it is. So that's gonna be the ledge of his hat there, that craft stick I just cut and painted white. And then I decide I want my little striped hat to go all the way around the sides as well. So I end up painting the white. And while it's drying, I start painting this little part here that's going to be the rim of his hat. I'm just using some of the apple barrel paint in burnt umber and I'm distressing the edges. So you can see I dry brushed it with white paint just to kind of give it a soft little hue there of just a little like almost whitewash of white paint and I'm distressing it now with the burnt umber. And in pencil I'm going to write the um, 1776 on there, right there. And I'm going to trace it in the furniture marker in black. You can use a permanent black marker, whatever you want. That's just what I had on hand. And now that my white paint is dry, I'm going to go ahead and finish my little stripes up the side of his hat. Using a little bit of hot glue, I'm going to glue the rim of his hat on at a slight angle. And here comes the antique parchment. I'm gonna just put that on nice and soft. I just felt like if that was gonna be his face, I wanted to tone it down just a little bit again to kind of help it tie in with the rest of the decor I've done. And then I wrapped some twine at the bottom and I glued a little wood bead for his nose. I used some of the Spanish moss to make a beard. And then I took a permanent marker for his eyes and used two towering blocks on the back so he could stand up. And I love this one. This is a great tiered tray decor piece. So this is a very, very tall whiskey bottle that one of my neighbors offered me. And I thought, yes, I'll take that. It's really heavy and thick. It's good quality and it's huge. So I thought I could do something pretty with it. And bottles are always fun to work with. So I'm giving it a coat of my homemade white chalk paint. If you'd like the recipe, the video for that is down below in my description box. I give you several different options on what you can use for that. And after the paint is dry, I do have to do two coats, by the way. And after the paint is dry, I go ahead and I start taking my antique wax. Now you can use any antique wax for this. I'm using the one by Folk Art, but I'm just gently dry brushing it on. I'm taking my time just to give it a little bit of texture and dimension and, you know, distress I, that's the look I like and then I went ahead and I printed this free printable up this is from the graphicsfairy.com I will have the link down below in my description box I found these gorgeous butterflies and the butterflies in a row of three like that is just very in and hot right now it was last summer too so I thought it would be fun to add this to the bottle so I'm just doing the old trick of taking the paintbrush dipping it in water and going around my little tissue paper and tearing the edges there so for those of you that are wondering how I print on tissue paper. It is just gift tissue paper. I tape it on cardstock with regular masking tape and then just run it through my printer and that's it. We, well, right side up so that the uh, print goes up on the tissue paper and not on the cardstock. And then I'm using a Dollar Tree glue stick. It worked brilliantly. I actually wasn't sure if that was going to work on a bottle. I don't think I've tried it on a bottle yet and it worked great. No wrinkles, perfect adhesion. I went outside, gave this a little light mist spray of the clear lacquer just so the, you know, it, the image didn't lift. Really light though. I just misted the front. And then I got this stamp from Amazon, 
and the jury is still out here. It's supposed to be that fake crackle effect. And I've been seeing, you know, the IOD stamps, just different stamps of the crackle effect. And this kind of five star review on Amazon, everybody loved it. And I tried ink first, it didn't work. That's why it was staying a little bit at the top. So I'm just slapping some of the elephant gray from Apple Barrel Paint on it to do it that way. And it definitely gives it texture. It definitely gives it dimension. It gives it a whole neat look. It comes up very beautiful. But when everything was said and done, and, you, and I, would, I really, really wanna hear from you in the comments to see what you think. But for those of you that have worked with Crackle Medium there, that's what you end up with right there. Crackle Medium is where, or even just glue, you paint a dark color first and then you put your glue on, let it dry till it's kind of tacky and then you paint your white paint over it and it dries with cracks all over. To me, that still looks more legit than the stamps. No matter how good the stamps are, even when they use ink, you just, at least in person, maybe on camera, it looks like it's 3D, but in person, it does not have that dimension. This is actually my husband's favorite DIY today in this video. He wants to keep the bottle because I was putting raffia ribbon on it, wrapping it with that jute twine at the top, putting a rose on the top to give it as a gift, but he's keeping it. So I don't know if the rose, he likes the rose, so it might stay. <laughs> So awesome husband. <laughs> but anyway, we're all done. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I took a Dollar Tree jar, they come with a lid, and I made this free printable. I thought it was really, really cute. And this is another free printable, the roses, that you can use along with this. You can skip that one if you want, but I just wanted to decorate the lid. And I discovered that the masking tape roll at the Dollar Tree is the perfect shape to use to trace the circle for this lid. <laughs> I don't know if that's helpful, I hope it is. And I'm gonna use the Elmer's um, glue stick to glue this down. I pretty much use a glue stick for everything and I have done it before on shiny surfaces and I've been really really pleased. Again, not super critical what you use to glue it down as long as it's a decent adhesive but it is critical if it's going to be handled a lot and get wear and tear you know, you're going to be touching it that you use a good sealant whether that's a spray or whether that's Mod Podge. In this case I went ahead and I used Mod Podge. Now you'll see that I do put the Mod Podge a little bit over the edge of the label and then I take a baby wipe and wipe around as straight as I can just so there's like a little sliver of Mod Podge hanging over the paper on every single edge to seal it in because I'm gonna to be touching it a little bit and I might pick it up and I don't want it to come off. But I'm not a big fan of covering the entire glass with Mod Podge for the reason that I showed you in the previous clip. <laughs> it just, for me, it looks streaky and you can it peels off. It just gets to be too much. You could also definitely spray a varnish on this. That would work too. And I have to be honest, there has been quick crafts that I've done that have just been meant like just to stay up for a season and I didn't seal you know, it was on glass or something shiny and I did seal it with Mod Podge and it still stayed on. So here you can see it with a lid. It's a beautiful decorative jar. And then here it is as a vase. off and save those because of course you never know when you're going to need those for another craft and I am going to go ahead and remove the beaded top as well although I will be keeping that as the hanger because I thought it was really nice so now I'm just going to start gluing craft sticks on and I am going to be cutting them along the edge this is pretty self-explanatory it does take some time I'm not going to lie these are smaller craft sticks it's like the larger ones that you can get at the Dollar Tree but you know to cover the whole sign because it was rather large. It did take some time and measurement and not all the sticks are perfect. Some of them were smaller, some of them were warped. So I had to, you know, keep cutting, keep trying to get everything to fit perfectly because you really want them to be really tight in there. And we're just going to do that whole thing on the whole sign. So when I ran into a problem where the edge, see how right there where the craft sticks meet, 
sometimes the edges weren't flush because even though visually it looked like they were the identical width, they weren't. So there's a the little hack right there that worked great. You just take a nail file, file along the edge to make it flush, and then you can continue on with your project and your craft sticks will fit perfectly flush against the other craft sticks. And when I was all done, I just took my super sharp scissors, which I got at Walmart, and cut around the edge. And then I took the nail file and just filed around the edges to make sure they were nice and smooth and flush with the MDF board. Now you're probably wondering, oh no, Holly, the three dark sticks in the middle. I just used up my craft sticks. In fact, I wish I had put more dark ones in the middle. I'm going to cover the center of this sign. So I figured I might as well use up those craft sticks. You're not going to see them. And it just, you know, for the purpose of laying something on top, they did the job. And when I stained it, as you can see, well, you can't see it at all, so that's good news, and you don't have to stress so much about matching your craft sticks perfectly. So I am using watered down antique wax as I'm staining here. It doesn't smell, and so I love to use stuff that doesn't stink, because otherwise I don't like to craft. And I'm stapling that hanger on the back again, and I'm gluing down a little cute fresh soap and water sign that I got from Team U for $2, but you can get any round. You can get a round from the Dollar Tree, you can print something up and put it on a round piece of poster board, and then put a border around it with some nautical rope. Use your imagination to have fun, but I think this is a great idea to do with craft sticks. I don't know how many of you are fans of Pinterest, but I found this gal on there. She has a blog or a website called Burlap Kitchen. I absolutely love her style. You're going to need a Dollar Tree wooden star. So there's your free printable paper, the stars that you're gonna need. And you're gonna need some of those towering blocks. I didn't have a crate, so I went ahead and made a crate. This is a crate that I made. I used two towering blocks in the corner, and then I just cut my craft sticks to fit. So pretty self-explanatory. Easier to do, obviously, is to go to the Dollar Tree and just buy one of their crates, which is what I think she did. But hey, I winged it because I didn't have a crate, and I really love this craft, and I wanted to make it. I'm using a star off of that Dollar Tree flag. I'm gonna go ahead and print up the distress flag again that I used for the previous craft, but this time I'm only going to use the red and white stripes. So that's the part of the video you lost, but it's very self-explanatory. I just covered the star with that. So here I am gluing the crate down on my star covered you know, star covered star. <laughs> and then I'm taking the little star and I did the red stripe little lines kind of sideways there. I thought that was cute. I'm using a votive candle that you get at the Dollar Tree and I'm just putting a little bit of hot glue just to hold it a little bit more sturdy than it was before. And I am totally comfortable with using tea lights with real open flames in anything that escapes the heat. Like it's not really a fire hazard. Any candle is a fire hazard if you walk away from it. So I never walk away from mine. So I'm very comfortable. If you're not, you can always get an electrical little tea light from the Dollar Tree. They sell those. And then I just added some of the Dollar Tree floral moss, not the reindeer moss because it doesn't smell as bad. <laughs> and some of the boxwood that I got from Amazon, but you can get that at Walmart as well. I'm going to light this up and I think this came up absolutely beautiful. I love this DIY and I would love to hear from you guys. What, what, what do you guys think? For this project, I cut out a heart shape, like a wreath, I guess, out of the cardboard. And then I'm just taking the craft sticks, the smaller ones, and I'm putting them all over wherever I can. I even cut some of them to give this more thickness, I guess, and guess more substance, more weight. And I'm going to do it on the front and the back of the heart.
Next, I'm just using plain old masking tape. You can use any kind of tape you want. It would work for this, but I'm going to cover the entire heart in the masking tape. It's going to give it more of a flat surface. And so I kind of overlap on the tape as well, but that's what it looks like when we're all done. Next, I mean, you're not really gonna see that the surface is kind of uneven with this anyway, and even if you did, it would add to the charm. Next, I'm going to paint it white. Now, I'm just putting this in there to show you what I did, but then I changed my mind and thought, oh no, I wanna do something else with this heart, so I painted it black. So you can skip the white part if you want, just go straight to the black, blow dried it. Then I'm gonna use regular old school glue, and I'm gonna squirt it all over this, and paint it and cover this with the school glue. For those of you that have watched my channel before, you might guess here, we're gonna do like a crackle medium effect on this heart. That kind of, you know, that's why I was talking about the surface being uneven, it doesn't matter because with the crackle effect, it's just gonna add to the look and make it look even better. So I blow dry it till it's just tacky. So it's not wet anymore. So you can paint it with your brush and not get glue on your brush. That's the trick. You just, you just when you touch it, it's kind of sticky. And then I covered the whole thing again with, I used um, chalk paint and it was folk art, folk art chalk paint. I have the link down below in my description box if you're interested in the one that I got from Amazon. And then after that, I just took my heat gun, which is really just like a blow dryer. I mean, you can use a blow dryer for this. And I just dried it and waited for the cracks to appear. And when they all appeared, we were all done. The next part to this is decorating it. now. I didn't have enough cardboard because I did so many cardboard crafts in this video, but normally, honestly, if I you know, had enough cardboard, I would have cut out five of those hearts and then put the probably the tumbling tower blocks in between and made this really chunky and thick, so it was like an inch thick. I think that would have looked even better. It still came up very pretty, and I decided to keep it just in the green and white theme here. All of these florals are from Dollar Tree except for the boxwood that I got really cheap because I got a whole bunch for like $9.99. The link is down below in my description box if you're interested from Amazon. But I just feel that that would be even prettier if you can make it chunkier. I just ran out of cardboard. So you could do either or. And this is it. And I'm gonna put it in the middle of my eucalyptus wreath on my front door. next project I decided to use three salad dressing bottles and I actually got these at Aldi's and I'm starting off with painting them white now I'm not too concerned about getting a super full coverage at the bottom half of the bottle because we're going to be covering them in a minute but I will end up doing a second coat on the top half here's the Dollar Tree vinyl I used it in a previous video I had some left and I thought you know I think this will look really really cute I had a feeling, I was hoping that when I put these on because they're shiny, that it would look like actual ceramic. You know, like it was, when you go into Hobby Lobby or Michaels, you'll find this Buffalo check on bottles where it's actually part of the bottle. It's painted onto the ceramic glaze. And I was hoping that's what these would do. And sure enough, they did. When you get all the wrinkles out at first glance, they look just like a ceramic bottle. They look really expensive, but Here's what I would do differently if I had to do it again, is I would take the bottles, I would do a second coat on the top half of the bottle, and then I would take it outside and use a gloss a sealant so that the top part's really shiny, and then the whole thing I think would have, it still looks really, really good, but as I was studying it, I thought, you know, I don't have any, unfortunately, in gloss right now, but. I, and my daughter-in-law, she took this, she loves it. So, in fact, it's so cute. I gave it to her before I took a picture of it, so I asked her to send me a picture back and she staged it in her little kitchen. It was really cute. But I thought if I had to do it again, and if you guys do this project, I should mention that to you, that if you want the shine to go all the way up to make it look even more authentic, 
you might want to consider doing that before you stick the um, vinyl on. So now I'm just taking some leftover burlap that I have from a Dollar Tree wine bag that I got at Christmas time and I glued it in half. I'm going to tie it with the jute twine and then I'm just going to cut them on either end to kind of make them look like a flat bow. I just thought that would be kind of different. It's a new look that I've never done before and it did. It turned up really cute. And now here's where I go in and I do a second coat on top of the bottles because I realized when everything's said and done, it didn't look quite right. And I decided to use this cute little wooden box to sit them in. I had bought a basket for them originally from the Dollar Tree, but they were a little bit too big and the wooden box ended up being so, so cute with the little feet and everything. It worked perfect. We're using the leftover dried flowers from my Mother's Day bouquet and that's it they're gonna be all done here and you're gonna see that if you know i don't use i usually stage my diys but you'll actually see how they are sitting right today in the kitchen at my daughter-in-law's house which i thought is super cute In my planter video, I showed how you could take these little containers from the Dollar Tree and turn them into cute succulent planters. And I mentioned the lids, I was gonna use them for another DIY and we're doing it today. So I'm taking the two lids, they have a little bumblebee on the front of them. I just don't care for the colors, but if you glue it together like I did with the Gorilla Super Glue, it becomes a super heavy quality ceramic piece for a tiered tray decor. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint it with white chocolate paint now this chalk paint is the base of it is an acrylic paint it's like a multi-surface paint so that it will stick to the glass when you make homemade chalk paint it really matters what paint you start with like if you want to do furniture start with a high quality latex paint before you add your chalk paint ingredients that would be appropriate for furniture if you're just using it for crafting stick with acrylic paint so now I'm using the Apple Barrel acrylic paint in the color Antique Parchment, and I'm just gonna go ahead and start painting his wings. Then I use the furniture pen from the Dollar Tree to trace his little body. You can see what I'm doing there. I'm just kind of doing his head, the little stripes, his feet, his little antennas. Next, I'm taking a chalk marker. This is a chalk marker from a line that's super bright, but it is a chalk marker, believe it or not. It's the only one I have. My son-in-law gave it to me, so I'm using it. I'm gonna go ahead and tone this down, but just to start with, because I wanted to get some golden colors in him, I'm gonna go ahead and do his little stripes with this bright yellow. I'm using Nutmeg Brown from Apple Barrel Paint now to do a little bit of dry brushing. You're gonna see how I go about toning this down. So I'm doing a little bit of dry brushing over the yellow, but it also gives the illusion of the little fur on the back. You know how bees have that little fur? So hopefully this kind of creates that illusion a little bit better than just a solid flat color. So after I dry brushed him with the nutmeg brown, I take a little bit more of that antique parchment, also apple barrel, and I'm dry brushing his head. I'm just kind of toning the whole thing down. I don't want anything to be like really harsh, like it's obviously an ink pen or a furniture pen, just making it look nice and soft. I take the nutmeg brown, I go around the edge, the outer edges, and I'm dry brushing it on there as well. And I decide to go ahead and do the center and the sides. You can see what I did right there. I just decided to do the whole thing with the nutmeg brown. And I write B Bumble on it. 
in today's world where it's modern farming and everything is sprayed, our little bees kind of struggle to find food that's clean and safe enough to eat. So leave those dandelions on your lawns. Don't spray your flowers. They pollinate our crops. They help feed us and we really need to help them back. They're so, so cute. And did you know if you see one tired on the ground, you can give them a little bit of jam or honey and help them on their merry way. So I'm taking two craft sticks and I'm gluing them together and I'm making a set of four of these. So there's four of two set, you know, a set of two and four of those all together. And then I'm going to start off by gluing it in a long rectangle shape like this. So you take two of them and then you're going to attach them with one craft stick on the top and on the bottom. Next, I'm going to go ahead and take another craft stick and glue it in the middle. And then I'm going to go ahead and space all of my craft sticks out and position them before I commit and glue them down. And I'm going to do that on the top half of this and then I'm going to turn it around like that and do it on the bottom half. Then I flip it over and I don't really want that craft stick on the front to show so I decide to do this crisscross formation to hide the top there so that you can't see where I joined the two, you know, the sides. There were two craft sticks joined together. You can't see where they're joined together with the crisscross shape there. And then using some towering blocks from Dollar Tree, I'm gonna go ahead and glue one at the top, one in the middle, and one at the bottom. If you haven't guessed, we're gonna go ahead and make like a little lamp for outside. I also made five of these for her luau so that they could be on each table, but they're super cute for patio decor, front porch, even inside, they came out so cute. You don't have to have the towering blocks. You could just use craft sticks if you wanted to and then glue you know two of them in a V shape on either end and then in the seam reinforce it with hot glue and that would also hold this together but I just use the towering blocks because I had them available and you know I need to use them up so now I'm gonna go ahead and take some more of that raffia I'm gonna cut it in three strips tape it to my little table and then braid it so this is what I decide to do to handle the side seams on this little lamp you don't have to do this it's just I'm trying to keep it with the island theme <laughs> <laughs> like a Tahitian type theme, but you could use nautical rope. You could use um, The nautical rope comes in different colors You could just leave it if you want or you could even fill it in with a little bit of spackling It's totally up to you how you want to handle the edges there and of course you don't have to do anything I'm just gluing this down as neatly as I can and that's pretty much it This makes a super fun family project and a great summer craft. I think it came up so cute I'm using this round that I found at the Dollar Tree at Valentine's Day because I'm trying to use what I have, but to make this a true trash to treasure, if you really wanna keep it that way, you can absolutely use cardboard cut in a circle and follow the video that I have out there called how to make a faux farmhouse wood plank, or I think maybe it's just how to make a faux wood plank. I will put the video down below in my description box, but it is a tried and true method. I've shown it with a lot of different videos, even how to make just faux wood lids for my coffee cans. It's kind of the same principle and you can do it that way. So I'm gonna use the round because I'm trying to use what I have, like I said. So I'm just taking some pencil after I painted it with some chalk paint and I'm just drawing the faux little ship lines. And this is just because, I don't know, sometimes I leave them all white, but for some reason with this one, I wanted that look of the lines. I just thought that looked cute. And I'm doing a little bit of dry brushing with the elephant gray paint from Apple Barrel Paint, just to distress it just a little bit. This DIY is a lot of fun. I've seen these before. It certainly isn't original, like I didn't think of this idea. I've seen them all over the place. You can buy them in the store. <laughs> oh, and I'm taking a little wet tissue there just to smear this. That's what I like to do to make it look a little older, 
like older wood. Just take a little wet tissue or a baby wipe, either one works, and just smear the paint a little bit and then lightly dry brush over it again. And it just adds a little bit more of that authentic distressed wood look. But anyway, I, I have never made one of these. So I just thought it'd be fun to use my turmeric ginger right there. You guys, that tastes so good, by the way. That is awesome stuff. But I go ahead and, you know, that bottle, believe it or not, is super thick plastic. It, I, I remember holding it thinking, wow, this almost looks like glass. Yes, this does look like glass. I could use this for a craft. Some plastic bottles, you can totally tell they're plastic. But this one, in real life, if you hold it, it's really thick plastic and it could pass for glass. So I'm taking some of the burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree, I'm wrapping it around. Again, you've probably seen similar crafts to this, but I don't have one and I want one. And the reason I wanted to make this is because my children gave me beautiful Mother Day flowers. They do every year. And every year I dry the bouquet upside down and then I keep them for the whole year until the next year. And sometimes I keep them, you know, I'll put them, I'll make potpourri out of them or I'll put them in a little bit of lace and hang them on the Christmas tree. It just depends. But I do tr try to keep my flowers because I'm sentimental like that. So now I'm just taking a little bit of the nautical rope from the Dollar Tree. I'm wrapping the top because we don't want to see that top. At least I don't want to see that top. You can leave that top if you want to. And because it is plastic, you can just glue it down. You just use a really strong, good hot glue. Even if it fell off, it wouldn't do any damage. It's just per if you can find glass, if you find plastic bottles that are super thick, like you can't bend them or push them in with your hand and they look like glass, make sure you save them for crafting. They are great substitutes for the glass mason jars. So now I'm taking a little bit of raffia. That's my raffia from Amazon that I love so much. If you're interested, it's down below in the description box. It comes in a set of three. It comes in this color and then a really beautiful red and green. Definitely a very strong, nice raffia. Kind of, I've said it many times in videos, but it does perform more like a ribbon. It doesn't break, so you can pull it. Lots of fun. There's the flowers from my Mother's Day gift right there. They're all dried and still so beautiful. Raise your hand if you love dried flowers out there. I don't know if I'm the only one, but I have a thing for dried flowers. Sometimes I like them even more than I like fresh flowers. I just think they're such, they look very country. I, I, li I like them. And it's a great way for me to remember the beautiful gift my kids give me every year and their love. And now I'm just going to take the raffia and just wrap it around the stem a little bit and tie a pretty bow. Cut these down so that they're not so long and tuck them in the jar and then I'm going to make a pretty hanger for it. Now I made a raffia bow at the top there and I was originally going to put it on the front of the jar, but I decided to go ahead and use it to cover the whole of the Dollar Tree round. I'm using some of the Amazon wood beads and threading it on the raffia, and we're just making a pretty hanger for this. I really bit into the wood beads lately. I just think they're so pretty. They were so cheap, so I bought three bags, and I really think they take the signs from looking just so so to like wow that looks really really pretty so that's it i'm using the sherbonder glue so it's on there nice and strong and we're all done and of course i love this So I took this container right here and gave it a coat of my homemade white chalk paint. The video link is down below in my description box if you're interested. And I didn't use two coats, I didn't need to. I just kind of put it on extra thick or it was going on extra thick. You can see it right there in the camera. It was covering everything fine. So I just did one coat and I went ahead and painted the whole thing, including the lid.
Once everything was dry, I took the antiquing wax and I decided to go ahead and make the lid look like a faux wood. Now as I'm giving it all its little accents and everything, it's actually bringing out that word enfamil even more and I thought, oh no, 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 that's not going to do. So we're going to take care of that in a minute, you'll see. But for now, I'm just going to concentrate on the side of the lid and the edge of the lid. I didn't realize I actually left that in the video. That's that moment when I looked at it and went, oh, no, 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 that won't do. So I grabbed the lightweight spackling from the Dollar Tree. I actually add quite a bit of paint to this spackling to make it perform more like a creamy spackling because it's a little too dry and crumbly for me. You can do that. I mean, there's quite a bit. I would say I add probably anywhere from a fourth to third cup of paint in there, and it makes it go longer as well. You get almost one and a half to double the amount of spackling so that's a nice little money saving tip and I wasn't sure it was going to work on the slits but I went ahead and I covered the center and I'm just taking some water and a brush and smoothing it all out but the lid didn't really have much bend to it it's a pretty strong solid lid in fact if you guys ever come across these baby containers from either friends neighbors or you just are in the grocery store squeeze one or feel one they are so strong and I was pretty sure that the spackling would withstand the movement of somebody opening and closing the lid without cracking so I went ahead and did the elephant gray in apple barrel paint did a little dry brushing on the outside and the top of the lid and now I'm taking this is a mold that I made with some silicone molds I've shown it in previous videos I just squirt hot glue in there and then it comes out I just you know trim off the little pieces that were hanging over the edges with my cuticle clipper from the Dollar Tree and then we have these cute faux like I don't know metal I think they're normally supposed to be metal but they're super cute for like a French country look if you're into that they're just perfect for that and it's super dirt cheap to make them with hot glue instead of the clay and very very easy to do you can even put them in your oven because the ones I bought which are down below in the description box are meant to go in the oven like with heat because they're 100% silicone that's as far as I Make, double check that when you order it but that's what I understood when I ordered it so I went ahead and did a little bit of the antique wax around the edge just to give it a little bit more character and then I like to take a little bit of white paint and bring out the design and then just tap it with some of that iridescent fluorescent metallic paint that is in copper and make it look like there's a little bit of metal peeking out and then I take a little bit more of the gray and a little bit more of the antiquing wax I go around the edge and here's what I was talking about there's a cuticle clippers once you paint it you can kind of see the strings that you missed so just clip them off no big deal but we're all done and going on two weeks now of use and the spackling is still holding strong Another one of my absolutely fun favorites is the wooden children's puzzle. The other side is wood found in the toy section at the Dollar Tree. I just took the numbers out and then glued them in with a hot glue gun and stuck them back in so the back stayed nice and flat. You can cover it with paper if you want to. Here's the apple barrel paint in antique parchment and burnt umber. And I'm going to use those two colors to create a little bit more dimension and entertainment for the eye than just flat white. Now I did paint the wood side white already and it dried. This is my home made chalk paint. You can find the recipe for my chalk paints down below in my description box. I've got some great videos on how to make non-toxic chalk paint cheap. And the, the one has, the first one is kind of hard to find in the USA. So now I'm only listing, you can find that in my popular videos if you're interested, but the second one has three different options. I actually think they work at least one of them works better and it ended up being cheaper now because the price has gone up on the other ingredients so I now list that video for you to watch and you, can, you know again can find it in my description box so I'm just using a little bit of the antique parchment then a little bit of the burnt umber and wherever it was too dark I just went over it a little bit more with the antique parchment look how pretty that looks I love that look I just think it's so so pretty 
but I'm using the burnt ember on the edge to distress it a little bit and now I found these beautiful rub-on transfers from the Dollar Tree during springtime. Actually they still have them there. It's summer now and they still have them. But if you don't want the word spring on it, you can certainly just avoid rubbing that off or you can write the word summer in place of it. I don't mind the word spring, but the rest of the imagery is perfect for summer. The bike, the butterflies, the flowers, everything. I thought, wow, this is great for summer. Again, I don't mind that it says spring. But I'm just rubbing it off using the back of my scissors. And if you're missing a section, like if you lift it up and you notice the section is not on, don't panic. Just put it right back down and rub again. It will come off. And then I'm using the raffia to thread some of the wood beads that I got from Amazon. Those were a really good deal when I got them. They were $5 and they're often $5. So if you're interested, check it out. And I made a beautiful little wooden bead hanger. I just thought that was so cute. There's a knob from the Hobby Lobby clearance aisle that I got for 35 cents. Beautiful, I got like four of them. And I showed you that you just screw in reverse to take that little screw thing out. And then I use the Gorilla Super Glue and a little bit of hot glue for an instant hold just to kind of glue it down so it doesn't go anywhere. I was originally making this for a key holder or I don't know, you can hang anything you want. I end up hanging dried flowers on it, but it comes up so beautiful. For this craft stick DIY, you're going to need a soft, round, cylinder-shaped container. Oatmeal containers are perfect for this. You do need a container you can cut, though, for this DIY. And I ended up using some folded paper. It made a nice, thicker template so that I could trace an even circle all the way around. See how I'm just kind of spinning my oatmeal container and tracing? That kept the line nice and even, so it met on the other end. And then I cut my oatmeal container in half. Next, I took a bunch of craft sticks and and taped them really tightly together and cut them so that I didn't have to cut one at a time. And it actually prevented all of them from splintering. That was a great hack. And then I took a little bit of sandpaper, gave it a light sand while they were still taped together. And I go ahead and start gluing these all over the oatmeal container. They also sell little round cylinder shaped like gift boxes near the gift section in the Dollar Tree. You could also use one of those. Now I made two of them and I ended up changing my mind. But this is the part of the DIY that you need to watch. I use sisal rope, you can use nautical rope, you can use twine, you can use whatever you want. I go ahead and glue it around and then I cut it in half and that way you get a nice even result so that your rope matches, I guess, on either side. So I just took that, glued it down on some scrap wood, added some more little rope for a handle. If you wanted to make this completely out of craft sticks, you could use the jumbo craft sticks from Walmart for the back scrap wood that I'm using just glue them all together using a brace behind them but this makes a totally cute craft stick DIY This heart is actually from Walmart for a dollar, but the Dollar Tree also carries those little wooden hearts. And then there's this rustic flag printable. You will find it down below in my description box. It's a free printable for you. Just click on the link and it will take you right to it. It's printed on regular computer paper because when I tried to do it on tissue paper on another wood project, it got a little bit darker than I wanted. So I went ahead and printed it up again on regular computer paper, glued it down with a Dollar Tree glue stick. Any glue stick will work. And then took a nail file here. It's a really rugged nail file, like for acrylic nails. And I went ahead and I filed off the edges of the paper. I'm using some of the Apple Barrel paint in antique parchment again. It's one of my favorite colors. 
And I'm gonna go ahead and distress this heart using that. Cause remember we're going for like a primitive look or a very rustic look. I usually never decorate for the 4th of July, but I thought, you know what? I've been seeing a couple of looks in patriotic DIYs, in magazines that I absolutely love. It's my style and I thought, you know what, this will be fun, why not? So we're going for it today. And this is the look I'm gonna try and create with these DIYs. I'm also going to use some of the towering blocks for a stand. They make great little stands because you can kind of configure them and design them at, you know, to fit whatever you're making, to lean at any angle that you need them to lean at. I love using them for this purpose. And I'm just taking two, gluing them together, and then there's two that I'm gonna put like in an L shape, and then I'm just gonna kind of pile it up, I guess. I hope you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just like piling up three of them and then I'm gonna use the two to kind of make it like an L shape. And then fingers crossed, that's gonna work. It did work, but I didn't know at the time if it was going to work, but it did work perfectly. So there's a little bit showing with the towering blocks because they're not totally narrow. And when I tried to make it more narrow, the heart was too wobbly. So the way I'm going to fix that, I'm gonna use a little bit of Spanish moss and I'm just gonna roll it up in a ball, glue it on the bottom and then trim it really, really close to that wood and it works perfect. So I did end up painting those towering blocks in the back with antique parchment because when everything was said and done, you could totally see them still, even though the grass was on there. So be sure to paint them if you do this DIY. And I decided when it was all said and done that this little heart was missing something and I didn't have any wooden beads that were small enough. And I thought, you know what? These mariachi beads should work great. And they did, they came up perfect. I actually love working with these. I think they're one of the most underused craft supply in the Dollar Tree, even with a little thread threads that attach them, I still think they look so fragile and kind of a very soft garnish and a soft accent to different crafts. You'll see here where I paint them, they look absolutely beautiful with this piece and they really add to it. And we're all done. I love, love the way this one came out. For this next DIY, I went ahead and took a Dollar Tree shaped egg you know, those egg plaques you can buy. And I traced it on cardboard because I love to challenge myself with cardboard to see if I can make high-end looking decor using cardboard. Because of course, cardboard is the cheapest way you can go when you're crafting. And it's super, super satisfying if you can make it look amazing. And most of us have access to free cardboard boxes at some point. So it's always my, you know, favorite, one of my favorite things to do. So I decided I wanted to see if I could stain cardboard. I thought, why not? Paper's wood and cardboard's definitely a step up from paper. So I took watered down wax. You can, you can use any antique wax you want. And I'm just doing the first coat because I wanna see how it takes with water, you know, mixed in. And it's really slippery and slidey. That's why I chose the wax and there's not that much water in it, but I chose this over paint, although I think you could probably do paint if you keep your, you know, if you do a dry brush technique. I've shown that in many videos. You can make anything look like wood if you get really good with dry brushing and using different colors. But back to this, I'm drying it now to assess where we're at to kind of take a look and see what color I'm getting. And while it's drying and I'm watching it, 
I'm taking these bunnies that I found at the Dollar Tree. They have like a little steak on the end of them and I just cut it off with my scissors, but I want to go ahead and stain the bunny while I have the wax out because I knew I was going to go ahead and move to using wax that's not diluted straight out of the bottle. So I want to get everybody stained before I put everything away. So I just take the brush, stain my little wood bunny, and I also want to compare the bunny that's wood side by side to the egg to see if it looks the same because that's the look I'm trying to get, right? Stained wood. I take a little bit of tissue, I wipe the excess off, and you can see there, you can see it. I don't know if you said it was really fast, but you can actually see that the bunny is extremely close to the egg. You can see it right there in the upper left-hand corner too. I mean, they pretty much look the same, but I wanted a little bit more wood grain in there. So, and interestingly enough, the bunny doesn't have a visible wood grain, but I still thought that would be pretty for the egg because the egg does have those little creases where it bent, even though this is really thick cardboard that I can't bend, I think maybe it got banged around or something happened where it had these natural little creases and I just felt that made it look more like wood. So I'm using undiluted wax, dry brushing it on, and then I'm taking a baby wipe and I'm using just my pointer finger, just one finger, and I'm just kind of strategically going through the wax and streaking it on purpose to make it look like wood grain. Now I'm gonna cover most of this egg and I knew that, that's why this was a perfect thing to practice on. I'm really only concerned about the very top looking like wood, and look at that. It actually, the very top there, where the lines are, the top of the egg, I don't know why I'm showing you the bottom of it, but. <laughs> because it was the top that I wanted to focus on, but it does. So I think, well, wow, I wonder if I can sand this too, just like wood with a nail file. Eh, you can, kind of. It's not as good as cutting it because it does get like little hairs on the edge, so that's not as good. But now I have this lace doily from the Dollar Tree as well. It comes in a package of two. And I'm gonna go ahead and just cover the lower half of this egg with the lace doily. One of the things I have spoken about before is how important it is to cover the edge of cardboard if you're going to use cardboard to do your crafts because obviously, right, if you can see the side of the cardboard hanging on the wall, that's gonna look really cheap and nasty. So you can do it different ways. I will often take for all year round decor and glue four of these. So I would have cut out four eggs, glued them all together, taken spackling and put it along the side and then stain the spackling, that looks awesome. That looks like a super heavy, nice plaque. You can also use parts of baskets. You know, there's a Dollar Tree basket that I've taken apart before and you can use, it comes in natural colors. There's one that was out last year that was natural basket color and then one that was kind of stained. Either one of those, depending on what craft you're doing, make excellent covers for the side of your crafts. That metal ribbon that Dollar Tree sells also makes wonderful coverings, the leather ribbon that Dollar Tree sells. So there I'm showing you those two lines. Look at how awesome that looks. That really does look like wood for what it's worth. I mean, it, it might as well have been a wood Dollar Tree, you know, sign. But the one thing that I did do that I regretted, I still love the way this came out, but I made all of that effort and then I went and glued a bow on the top. And of course, because it was cardboard, there's no going back. If you tear that off, you'll damage it. But if you make this craft, I would suggest that you consider putting the bow on the bottom of the egg and not on the top and just doing all the pretty ribbons hanging down from the bottom of the egg and then glue more of them together or use twine or nautical rope or something around the edge of the egg to cover the side but so you can show off your wood grain you know if you get it you know if you're rocking it it's looking really good <laughs> it just doesn't make sense to cover it up with a bow and flowers so I guess if this was a Dollar Tree sign I would have decorated it this way but I really want to show off the wood grain anyway that is a pick from Walmart they are out right now as I speak and you know I don't know if they'll be there a week from now, but they're 97 cents and they're absolutely gorgeous. Now I wanted you guys to see the bunny in the center there. I was going to consider putting it in the center and just gluing it there and I wanted your opinion, but I ended up deciding to go ahead and glue the bunny to the center of the Dollar Tree egg, thread some wooden beads, and then make him look like he's hanging off the wooden beads from the twine. So here's something I did that's kind of unusual. 
To close up the twine in a loop shape, I just put a little dot of hot glue on the tip of it and then pushed it back up inside the bead and that did the trick because this is very lightweight, it's not anything heavy, so it was just for the look. And then I'm going to go ahead and tack down the bunny with a little bit of glue so that he's hanging nice, you know, what he looks like he's hanging nice because sometimes things don't always hang exactly the way you want them to. <laughs> so I tack it down and I also added a little bit of ribbon tail there. So that does the job of covering up the side of the cardboard, but it also, like I said, I cover all the wood. Oh well, I take some nautical rope, hot glue it on the back, secure it with a bit of masking tape while it's hot so the masking tape kind of melts into it, and then I tack my little egg ornament down and we're all done. I do think this came out very beautiful and I'd love to know what you guys think. But that saying right there, friends and family gather here to me is definitely an autumn type sign. It's an autumn type saying. So I thought, I just made a pumpkin. I'm going to stay in the theme here and make some pretty fall stuff. I actually can't wait for fall, you guys. I, I love crafting all year round. But of course, holidays are my favorite time for a lot of people because that's when the crafting videos get the most views. I mean, a lot of people love to craft during the holidays. But I thought it would be fun. To, you, you you can leave this up all year round if you want, but it does remind me of autumn. And I went ahead, I'm using one of those Dollar Tree signs again. I love them, love them, love them. Look at that. I used to have to do paint sticks to make like a shiplap look or we'd have to score the board. Dollar Tree has just brought out so many things to make it so much easier for crafters. It's all ready to go. So I cut the board and I actually cut on the other side a little bit of two you can see on the left hand side I kind of made it a little bit rough too on the edge because I wanted it to match I didn't catch that on film sorry about that or I did and I didn't put it in here <laughs> I caught it on film but I didn't put it in this video and all I'm doing now is just trimming this little mat down to fit this sign I love ticking stripe that's what we have on the edge there and I thought I don't know exactly where I'm going to do with that ticking stripe but I'm going to cut it and keep it we're going to get it on this sign and I decided to put it on the ends just like that in the end there and I think it complemented it so much and kept that whole country look because ticking stripe is so country it's so farmy farmy is that a word I don't know but it's just so perfect again for fall or if you do farmhouse decor it's perfect so I'm taking a little bit of the white paint again we're gonna dry brush this that's the only thing about these signs is they are very stock I guess I mean they don't do anything with them they're a blank slate for you and I like to usually dry brush them a little bit because otherwise they don't look as much like real wood so you either can paint them solid because the paint covers it you don't know what's going on under there that it's an mdf board or you can dry brush it that makes it look nicer too but just get something on there to make them look a little bit more expensive i guess now i'm taking a glue stick again this extra strength glue stick worked like a charm it held these vinyl mats i wasn't sure whether or not it was going to because vinyl is really slippery but it held them beautifully so that is an option i cannot vouch for a regular glue stick i have a feeling it would work but you'd have to be very generous but the extra strength extra strength one from walmart definitely works and i think it runs about five dollars for a large one so i'm just putting that down and i'm going to go ahead and put the ticking stripe on either side so now i'm using a black furniture marker you find them in a set of three at the dollar tree and i'm just going around the edge of that placemat a little bit and i'm not keeping the line totally straight i want it to look a little bit rustic and you know distressed I guess and antiqued and the final step to make this come together so that it is cohesive is to put a little bit of dry brushing on the top of the vinyl mat and I think this sign came out so nice it is perfect for an entry table a console table or a shelf
For this next one, you're gonna be using the Dollar Tree Larger Craft Sticks. And I made a V at the top, so now I'm using that as a template so I can get the identical shape because you do need them to match. So that's how you go about making sure they match. Just lay it on top and glue the second one on top. And then I'm gonna take them apart and I'm going to glue two of the larger craft sticks on either side of those. Once I'm done with that, just like I did with the star that I made, I'm just gonna go ahead and start gluing a bunch of craft sticks on top of each other. I think I made a total of 14 rows, maybe 15, no more than 15. And I, you know, again, this takes a little bit of time, but it's totally worth it. Listen to some good music, turn on your favorite TV show or movie, and totally relax and do this. It's very relaxing to do. Once that's all done, you're gonna have like these little slots in between the sticks. And so I measured it so that, you know, they're very tight fitting too, which is great. So you take the smaller little craft sticks from the Dollar Tree and you measure it so that it's not gonna protrude out on either side and you cram it in the last row in the back and then one in the front row. And then you add a little drop of hot glue just to secure them. And you, while it was still liquidy and hot, I was able to move them around a little bit to make sure they're level because we're going to be making this little shelf level. And I'm using the larger craft sticks now to, you know, I put them down first to see how many I needed to cut measured. And I'm cutting now what's going to be, I guess, the bottom of the little shelf so I'm just gonna you'll see I'm gonna cut these little craft sticks out and there you go right there I'm just gonna use a little tiny bit of hot glue on each of the ledges there and glue those craft sticks down side by side that's what it looks like when you're all done. So just to reinforce that, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of glue underneath in the area that I'm showing you. I'm so glad there's video, you guys. This would be so hard to explain, but it's a good idea to reinforce whenever you can, even though I'm using hot wood glue. I just, this is obviously going to be like a little wall shelf, so there is gonna be something on top of it, so I want to get that extra reinforcement. And I end up thinking the bottom half of this is just a little too empty. I guess there's too much empty space, so I'm putting a little decorative touch at the bottom there by adding some small craft sticks and just making like a little row of stripes I guess this ends up being so cute my son actually put it in his kitchen with his little panda bear salt shaker on it which I thought was so cute but it's perfect for a bathroom if you have a coastal theme again farmhouse boho this is a perfect cute little like sconce shelf So this is actually how I make all of my hearts. Anytime I do hearts like this for cardboard, I only trace half of it for a template in different sizes, and then I just flip it over and do the other half so that I have symmetry. So I just wanted to put that in there just in case somebody's curious. I never do good hearts otherwise, they're always lopsided, which sometimes can be cute, but it's not what I wanted for these DIYs. So I'm using this quilt batting and I'm just cutting it out and then gluing it on top of the cardboard because I wanted my heart to be a little bit puffy. You could use filling from an old pillow, from an old quilt. Again, use your imagination, even cotton but use your imagination, just have fun with this. And of course, we're gonna cut it to match the shape of the heart. And then after we're all done with that, we're gonna go ahead and cover it with some cloth. So now we're doing the material. I did wanna share a little life hack. It's kind of a craft hack too, because I use it for everything when I'm too lazy to whip out my iron. So when I'm sewing, I do iron, because you have to iron when you sew. But I just use a water bottle and squirt, you know, mist my wrinkles out basically. It's like a cold steam. <laughs> <laughs> and it works. I mean, there is a Dollar Tree cutting mat under there so that my you know, surface doesn't get soaking wet. And I just spray the wrinkles out and then dry it and we're all done. So I just wanted to let you guys know that's how I got the wrinkles out of the cloth. And this is some Dollar Tree material that I found, but again, you could use old shirts, 
you could use anything you can find around the house it would all work and I just trace it out but I do you know leave a border there you can see that I leave them enough material especially where the heart curves in the center you want to be really careful to not cut a big slit there because otherwise the cardboard will show and then I just slit it all the way around the edge and glue those little slits down and we cover the heart Next, there's this little faux lace doily that they sell at the Dollar Tree. You don't often find them. I actually, this was a fluke that I found this because it was in a weird place. It was a weird Dollar Tree in the middle of a city that I never go to. Was, and I just saw it and I went, ooh, I'm grabbing those because you hardly ever find them. So if you can't find them, don't stress. But you can use any piece of lace you want or you can use another piece of material down there. Again, have fun. You, you know, just use your imagination and I'm just gonna hot glue this on at the bottom. I was debating whether or not I should cover the whole heart with the faux lace, but I thought that might be overkill, so I just went with just a little tiny bit halfway down. Let me know what you guys think, I'd love to know your thoughts. But I now am using the antique wax. Any antique wax will work for this, and I'm just gonna distress this heart a little bit to make it look more vintage. Um, I really didn't know what I wanted to do with this heart. This took time, but here's a great trick. When you see those little head wraps for little girls at the Dollar Tree, grab them because they make great little garnishes for your DIYs. I went ahead and used the white one on this and I'm just pulling it around the heart, you know, for a decor piece. And then this heart ribbon lace, which th this is at most Dollar Trees that I've been to, so you should be able to find this. It's great if you wanna make heart DIYs or heart decor around your house. I'm just gluing that underneath to add a little bit more of an accent. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and take the glue gun and tack this down like the ribbon and also the elastic on that little headband. That did wiggle and I'm just, I recommend that you definitely tack it down with some glue so that it will stay in place. Next I took a Dollar Tree Pearl and I glued one in the middle of that little circle, the little, I don't know what that is, I don't think it's a bow. <laughs> I'm not sure what to call that but I wanted the bow on the top here that I added to have some more loops, so I decided to go ahead and make them. You know, I just makeshifted this. I mean, if you know how to tie a double bow, that would be easier, but I just wanted to let you know in case you noticed that, that I did add some extra loops in there afterwards. And I've had these pearls for so long that I just want to use them up on something and I thought it would be pretty to add some more garnish on this. This definitely takes it more from like a country look to a French country look. I mean, I, for my style probably, I should have not put any pearls on, but I wanted to use them up. And I do think it came up very, very pretty. If you want to do more of a glamorous or more of a vintage type decor in your home, it's perfect for that with the pearls, definitely. So I decided to use some more of the Dollar Tree lace to make a hanger on the back. And I don't know if you noticed, I also glued a little white flower in the center of that bow. And now I'm just adding one of the Dollar Tree keys to this because it's a perfect craft for that. And look at all the keys. If you find those, those are so cute. Be sure to pick them up. They're great for crafting. But I think this came up so pretty. This next one's a fun DIY. I just took some of the Dollar Tree wooden hoops. They come in packages of two. And I thought, you know, I wonder what would happen if I just started gluing the towering blocks all over the little hoops. And I was gonna go all the way around and make like a, well, actually I might save that idea to show you guys later. So I'm not gonna tell you what I was gonna do. But I end up stopping halfway around and doing like a half circle and thought, oh my gosh, those would be such cute wall decor pieces, like for little succulents in it. I've seen so many things like that in magazines, especially for modern home decor and contemporary decor. So that's what I end up doing. And it actually comes out surprisingly expensive and high-end looking. It's definitely modern decor, but I think it's a great statement piece on a wall. And all you do is tuck some succulents in there and you're good to go. I 
actually kind of got this idea from something I saw hanging in the window of the salon that I go to, my hair salon. And I thought, ooh, I think I could make those with towering blocks. So I just take, again, glue three together. That's the same three formation that I love to use. And then I did the vertical in the opposite direction. And then I'm going to make four of those. Well, I actually end up making eight of those all together, but we need four for each of the little uh, boxes that I'm gonna make here. I'm gonna make little mini planters. For these little planters, I did not put a bottom in them because I am going to use artificial florals and so I thought, you know, I don't really need to do that. It's more work and you're not going to see it. Where I'm going to hang them anyway, you're not going to see it. And so I just end up curling the artificial flowers a little bit in like a hoop to kind of so, so they spring and have like counter pressure and they just hold themselves in the middle. And then I found these in the garden section at the Dollar Tree. They're those little chains for the plant pots. And I'm opening up the top of it using some needle nose to remove one of the chains on each of them. So we're just gonna have two chains left on each one of these hangers. And I have two of them. Next, I drilled four holes into each one of these and again, this one is really soft and smushy, so it's super, super easy to drill a hole in, so don't be intimidated to do that. And I'm using the Dollar Tree cuticle clippers here. You can see I'm just gonna clip away that excess wood right there so that I have a flatter surface to sand. All I did was glue those two blocks on either side of each box and then I put the hook back on the chain and I'm looping it through. Now I will say I cut that part of the film out but I did remove five links on one of the chains. I just cut up five links and removed them with using my needle nose pliers. I just opened them and took them off and then the other one I left in its original length because I wanted these to cascade a little bit. I'm using some of the Dollar Tree greenery here and you can see how I've kind of curled the bottom on purpose. I didn't cut them. I kind of curled it because I want them to stay nice and tight in there with counter pressure. But these are actually so dainty and so cute in real life. I love these. One of my shopping videos from Dollar General last summer, I found this bowl here and I was talking about in this video how I made this bowl and it was supposed to look like hammered copper and how easy you could probably do that with this one. So rather than just say that would probably work, I decided to try it out for myself. So I'm using the bottom of a tape roll for the bottom of this bowl. You could use like a big mayonnaise lid, anything like that, just so it elevates it a little bit. And of course, I'm using the E6000 to make sure everything sticks. And then after it's glued, we're gonna take it outside and spray it down with some of the copper spray paint and see the results. And I would really love feedback about this if you guys think that it does look just as nice or close enough, I guess, to like a hammered copper. Let me know what you think.
since they don't have any metal hardware on them, so they are great for crafts. And I'm using the larger craft sticks that the Dollar Tree sells. I'm just gonna go and glue the craft sticks all the way around. Now, I actually made this DIY for a friend of mine who's having a Hawaiian luau, and she showed me a picture of what she wants. But personally, if I made this DIY for myself or if you make it, I recommend that you glue the craft sticks on the inside of the large hoop and that you buy two packages of those wooden hoops from the Dollar Tree and then glue a hoop on the top and a hoop on the bottom because the Dollar Tree craft sticks are cheaper and they have imperfections and they're crooked and it just would help if you kind of had that, um, I guess, brace on the top and bottom. It would look more like a lampshade, but it would look totally cute. It could go farmhouse, farmhouse boho, and definitely like an island theme, either way. But again, she showed me what she wanted, so I went with that. And we're short in the back here. The, the big one fit perfectly, but on the tinier hoop, you're gonna need to cut a little craft stick to make it fit in that little area there, but it's totally fine, you don't see it. And here's some raffia that I'm absolutely loving right now. It's a package of three from Amazon in red, green, and like that neutral tan color. And you can see the roll is huge on the right hand side and it was like dirt cheap. So I will have that in my description box. It's very strong and flat. I like it because it almost functions more like a really thin ribbon. So here I am gluing them in for, you know, I'm just measuring and gluing it because I'm making a little hanger here. Again, I'm using a really strong glue. Once I get it nice and balanced, I'm just putting a little dot of hot glue there so that that stays together. And I chose to do this part separate because I wanted to measure the raffia to make sure when I glued it up at the top in the hoop there it hung out you know that I didn't want the lamp it hangs a little bit on the inside of the bigger part of the other shade if that makes sense so I just felt more comfortable doing it that way and to secure it I'm gluing the raffia around on the inner part of the wooden hoop and that way it's totally strong and it holds and it, I made five of these like I said so this ended up being so so cute and it was perfect for what she needed project and this is one I have shown in other it's a DIY hack that I have shown in other videos and I love this one and I thought this will be so cool to try on a cardboard heart it's kind of a really quick faux wood bark look gives it your project a lot of texture you just use tissue regular old Kleenex tissue and you take it apart so there's like the two ply there you want to just use one layer you could probably use two if you wanted to I just use one and you give it a quick little spritz of water and you watch it crinkle up that's the magic and then you take some spray glue I use the one from the Dollar Tree and you spray it so that it stays so you could also you I, I have used watered down glue where I kind of do 50% glue 50% water in that bottle and shake it up it also works and then you saw me drying it and now we're gonna paint it and you can see it has lots of texture there and it automatically also covers the side of your cardboard which is really handy when you're doing cardboard crafts and you want them to look nice and expensive um, to get the tissue around the edge of it because that way it covers it and you paint it and it looks like a regular like maybe a ceramic craft or just something you would buy at a store so now I took some of the creamy color there that was the chalk paint in plaster then I did gray um, the apple barrel gray pewter gray and I did territorial beige next so what I would do different if I had to do this again I was trying to get a different looking bark kind of one that was more dirty I get not dirty looking it's the wrong word just weathered but I was thinking afterwards I would have rather used white so if you want it to look like a birch wood more you, you're definitely going to want to stick with the base color being white and then go with the gray and the browns. And it doesn't really matter what color, gray and browns, just get it as close as you can to the ones you see here. But it just gives you a nice quick faux wood. It looks really pretty. So now I'm just putting on the little garnishes. I put a ribbon sideways and I decided to go for that look where you wrap the twine sideways, which by the way is a bit tricky because you do have to glue it in place. Otherwise it slides off your heart. So there is a little bit of glue on each one of those strands on both sides to hold that in place and then I'm taking some of the twine and I'm just going to tie it in the middle to give it another look after I tie it in a knot I'm going to wrap it around just twice secure it with a dot of glue and call it a day so to add some nice weight 
to this project and to prevent it from warping, I am going to go ahead and glue some craft sticks on the back. I always use the little ones because they're kind of thicker and heavier in my opinion, and they do a great job at keeping everything really stiff in the back. So next I'm using some of the Dollar Tree ribbon that I found. It looks almost like netting. It comes in a rusty color and it comes in this cream color, and I'm going to tie two bows. So I did one bow at the top there in the right hand corner of the heart. Now I'm tying the next bow and then I'm going to lay them just crisscross like a cross on top of each other to make like a little flower formation. You see me doing it right there. I'm gluing it down and that's how I made my bow for this one. And then I'm using these little Dollar Tree hearts that I found last year at the Dollar Tree. I did not see them this year. That doesn't mean they weren't there. I didn't visit every single Dollar Tree, but I love those hearts. I think the petals look so realistic and they're very subtle. So they're perfect for crafting. And then I'm using these little tiny wooden beads that I got from Timu. You can also get them on Amazon. They're really small and I'm gonna make a hanger and we're all done. For this project I'm using four cardboard hearts and I'm going to be using the scrapbook paper I got from Timu. So I just took a Dollar Tree long board, it was a Christmas sign and I'm doing a dry brushing to make it look distressed and vintage and once I like where it's at. And remember most of this is going to be covered so I wasn't too weird about it. But once I got it where I wanted it to be I'm using my glue stick, again heavily and um, generously so that the paper won't come off and I just go about gluing um, each piece of scrapbook paper onto each one of the hearts. So I started to put a border of twine around the hearts and trim all the loose hairs off and then I decided I just didn't like it. It made something that was very soft suddenly look kind of harsh and I didn't have any white trim. I think that would have been okay if I had some like thin white um, like ribbon or maybe like a round cylinder shape like the butcher's twine really tiny like that in white that would have been okay but I didn't have it so I just went ahead and left it because where I'm going to have this sign displayed it's going to be on a shelf in the corner where no one's going to see the side anyway but normally I do recommend you cover the sides if it's cardboard and then the board was a little bit longer than I wanted for these hearts so I went ahead and took my metal clippers there, they're wonderful, the tin snips, and I went ahead and trimmed off the edge of the sign. And then I decided it didn't look quite distressed enough, so I took my crafting knife and I just scraped off the paint here and there to make it look a little bit more chippy. Next, I'm taking my flame there and just singeing off the little extra hairs. I don't do it too much because I don't want to weaken that piece of thread and I'm actually not hanging it but I wanted the option The for now the hanger is just going to hang behind the sign it's up on top of a shelf like a corner hutch so I'm just leaning it but um, I just wanted to leave that just in case I want to hang it in the future and then I added some little twine bows and we're all done really pretty fabric at Walmart. I believe they were $2 each and it's very generous. You get quite a bit. I have a pattern for a bunny that's a free printable. You'll find it down below in my description box and I got this quilting from Amazon. Now if you don't have something like that I'm showing you this foam that I got in an Amazon package and it was for free. It came protecting something and I kept it. That would also work for this craft as well. You could also use cotton balls and we're gonna have to iron. <laughs> That's a nice thing about buying the cloth on the roll. You don't have to iron, but when you buy it folded up like this, you have to iron. So I'm showing you my new iron that I got. I finally splurged on a really nice iron and we're gonna go ahead and use a little bit of water. And I just folded a sheet down 
it was a queen size sheet and I just folded it down so that I protect my tabletop there and gave it everything a quick iron so there's no wrinkles. There's our pattern, our little bunny that I chose and I'm gonna cut him out. And then I'm gonna trace him on some cardboard and we're gonna cut out three cardboard shapes. I was gonna just stuff these bunnies and then after examining the batting that I have, the quilt batting, I decided that it was a little bit thinner than I wanted and I wasn't sure they were gonna be able to lean up very well or stand up very well. So for this year, we're gonna go ahead and put some cardboard in between the batting. So we're gonna have cardboard and then we're gonna have the batting on either side of the cardboard. So all I did here, it's pretty self-explanatory, is I just glue the batting down and then I put, you know, I, I just put it on both sides of the bunny and I do that for all three bunnies. When it came to gluing the material together, I just kept my glue very, very close right along the edge of the cardboard. And then I pressed in with my nails to make sure that the seam was close to the cardboard and the batting as possible. And then I just take my scissors when I'm all done and I'm gonna give these guys a trim. Using a Dollar Tree lace ribbon, I'm gonna put bows on these guys. Now, last year when I put a bow on a bunny with two little tails, because I'm using the Dollar Tree pom-poms here for the tail, and as you can see, I want the two there to have bows on the opposite sides of their neck, and then the middle one is kind of, you know, I love the little bunny faces. He's kind of my favorite, that material, so the bow's in the center. But I had some people come on and say, you can't put bows on the back, that's the back of them. And I thought, well, why not? Because I used to have a Shih Tzu, and when I took him to get bathed, he would come out with a little bow on the back of his neck. So, <laughs> oh, and my cats, well, not me, my mother. She used to take our cats in to get bathed. To be fair to my mother, she only did it twice because they were very unhappy. <laughs> but they also came back with bows on the back of their necks. So if you want to leave them off, you can. I think that looks cute too. Definitely if you're doing like a rustic or a primitive look, that would be great. But I love the little bows on the side of their neck or on the back, and I still see this as the back of the bunny. But anyway, as always, I would love to know what you guys think. They're all done. They were super fun to make. They make great accent pieces around the house. You can put them wherever you want, on console tables, floating shelves. They're just super fun, and they add a lot of festive energy to your environment. Follow my channel, you might remember this one from my winter crafts. I just knew that I did a couple of really good craft stick DIYs in previous videos, and I wanted to include them because they're worth sharing. And this is, you know, a craft stick video. So this is a. I actually started off. I wanted to make a rustic Christmas tree, so I'm doing the same thing that I kind of did with the angel in this one. I'm using it, you know, where I glue the craft sticks upwards with those little layers but we're gonna go ahead instead and kind of make it like a house at the top, you'll see. So I made another V formation with my craft sticks and I'm just gluing it on the top of this little formation. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and take the craft sticks and just kind of randomly crisscross them on the back. Now the cool thing with this craft is I easily could have turned this into a you know, a windmill, because windmills often have those little house tops. This can be turned into a barn. Uh, so, oh my gosh, they could have even been turned into super tall, rustic bird houses if you wanted. This was a winter craft, so I went with a winter theme, but this is a very versatile craft. You can absolutely change it up to whatever season you want it to fit. You can even make it for all year round. And as you can see, I chose to make them in different shapes, like different widths and different heights. And I just go ahead and slap some white paint on again. You can take the white paint, you know, after you're done painting them, you can go ahead and use a wax and stain these to look like wood. You can paint them red and change the wood on the inside to make them a barn. Just go with it and have fun. 
I go ahead and use a little bit of pine and decorate this whole thing for winter. I do end up taking the houses and gluing two on the back of some scrap wood and then one on the front and I shove some pine down in the center like this. But that could be straw for fall, spring flowers with bird houses for spring, but it's beautiful and it's a great craft stick DIY. scarf for this you can use anything you want and I'm going to take this piece of cardboard and cut it to this shape right here next I will be cutting this Dollar Tree scarf down the middle and I'm going to be wrapping it around the cardboard now as I wrap I'm going to be really careful to tuck in any of the seams that are fraying or unfinished I kind of just tuck them under and like hem them and then pull it tight enough to hold it down and it works perfect And this is what we have so far. Now that's a little bit bright for my decor. I wanted to soften it up and veil it a little bit. And it occurred to me that I found some tool on my last shop with me video. I don't, again, if you watch the video, I found both this scarf and the tool at that Dollar Tree by the beach. And I decided the tool would be a perfect veiling piece to soften up the pink and make it look softer. So I go ahead and wrap the whole heart up with tool. And now I'm making a messy bow out of different ribbons. If you want to see how to make a messy bow, check out my video on 10 bow hacks. It goes over every single bow I make in every video in detail so you can make them fast and easy and I give you nice tips and tricks along the way. And I just take that messy bow, glue it up in the left hand corner and I'm using these little foam hearts. They're so cute. I found them at Walmart and they were only I think a dollar even even though they're not on sale, they were only a dollar. And I just thought they kind of changed it up a little bit from the Dollar Tree stuff. And then I take some of my white chalk paint and cover these hearts up just to soften them because they're a little bit brighter than the look I'm going for this year. I kind of like my Valentine Day decor to be soft. And then I'm using the Burnt Umber to antique and distress them and make them look older. I glue one heart in the center of my bow. And now I'm going to take the Dollar Tree twine and glue it on each one of these hearts. Now this is actually the nautical rope just pulled apart into many, many pieces because the thin twine has been sold out at my Dollar Trees for a while. So just so you know, you can do that with the nautical rope. It comes apart really, really down to like small thin threads. So that's kind of a neat thing. And I want these to look like they're hanging from the heart. Now, because they're foam, they're too light. So in order to hold them in place, I'm just gonna use a dot of hot glue to glue them on the side of the heart. Using some of the black ribbon, I go ahead and glue it on the back for a hanger. I love pink and black together. I think that looks awesome. And I decide that my messy bow is a little bit too big, so I'm just trimming it down. And I also decide that the hearts need a little something in the middle, so I add some of the Dollar Tree pearls. And that's it. We're all done. If you watched this video to the end, you rock. Thank you so much. I love you guys. And until the next one, breathe deep, fret not, and do things that make you happy.